Coming from a galaxy near you, this is Brothers and Booze. And here are your hosts, Greg Washington and Doug Ziegler. And Lauren. You can't get rid of me. Yeah. And they can't get rid of that gator either. What was Grandpa thinking, Doug? And that is that bargain store Bob Barker there trying to fight the freaking <laughs> alligator with that book. That is very true. I'm not trying to go anywhere near anybody's alligator. I mean, I don't... And those those guys are fast. Alligators are not slow. Right. And what? Rocking within like six feet of that thing. Screw I'm pie feeling it out of there. <laughs> right. I'm the one with the camera laughing at y'all. Um, what I'm not laughing at, Doug, is this. California summer ale that you gave me, the North Brewery. I'm not known for their summer nice crisp ales, but I got one right here. Mm -hmm. It's a fun, light, crisp beer, Doug, that has a nice cinnamon, uh, not cinnamon, citrus notes. Um, mm -hmm. And it comes in a big old can. Wow. Yeah, I gave you one of, I gave you one of those oil cans. <laughs> Yeah, what does it say? Six percent here looks like. Yeah, six or six point um, four. Yeah, and I don't know if y'all, the few of y'all that are uh, familiar with this brewery, they don't do uh, many light ales. They like the big black dark ales and mm -hmm. yeah. lager. Uh, not lagers. I'm sorry, stouts. And yeah, they're a fun brewery, and this is a fun beer. Thank you. So fun, Lauren. Oh, they missed the they missed the alligator. Do we play the alligator again? Yeah, let's play it again for him. <laughs> That's what always happens to me. Okay, not this, but that always happens to me. I like I jump in and I like just miss whatever y'all are talking about. But now we get to watch this joyful right. chaos again. Um, he's lucky he didn't lose an arm there. Right. Right. I, it's just, it's just it's like, hey man, let me let me come over there three feet from the alligator to help you. Like, get the fuck away from that thing. <laughs> right. Well, None of that feels like a good idea. And like, I don't, I'm not for like sacrifice the elderly, but also should a younger, more spry person be doing? I mean, no one should be dealing with the alligator, but that feels like a bad, all a bad choice. Yeah. Uh, why not just leave yeah. it alone? Why, why do that thing? You're not the, the crocodile hunter. Maybe they aspired. Maybe it was a lifelong dream, and they wished they could be. Right. Um. So, yeah, we got a lot going on around here, y'all. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure what we should do, y'all. So we're going to do a little... Uh, a little live on stream production. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got Roberto here trying to. I don't know what he's doing here. We're gonna we're gonna get our guests on really soon. But what the hell is going on here? You guys. Yeah. It's the Friday before the Friday before the Saturday <laughs> of the forty for forty race. It oh, is. Oh yeah. The Septil Dia. Race Eve, which is a word that is Latin that I just made up. Um, <laughs> and so I'm here coming on real quick just to talk about the 40 for 40 race. First of all, shout out to our guy, Victor Aragon, who today went on the radio, I believe in Chicago, somewhere around there, and talked us up. So hopefully people heard that. Um, and... Uh, we're, uh, you know, we're getting ready to do this, man. The race gear is in. You can find this wonderful race gear. 
at Cafe Press. And if you buy a shirt, then all the money goes to the charities, goes into the pot. It doesn't go to me, it goes in the pot. You buy a shirt, money goes to some good cause. Um, so we're out here, we're doing a little test, man. I'm testing the, uh, how does this look when it's not on Wi-Fi, when I'm out in the world? Um, and also, I've measured out 40 yards here. It's uh, it's farther than you think, really. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a test run uh, from here to my house. Um, it's a little tough because I can't figure out how to flip the camera on my phone on this app. I don't oh. know if it's possible. Um, maybe, maybe not. So, Ryu. Hello. Is going to be my filmer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> We're going to send Ryu down to the end, and Eloise is going to yell go and time me. Now, understand, I'll try to show you guys this. I'm running this on, like, this sidewalk that's, like, undulating, and, like, it's got, like, cracks. I might just scrub California out. California sidewalk, yes. Yeah, I might. It's got roots and cracks and earthquake damage and water pipe damage. I might. You guys might see me just fall. Right no now. injuries. Not allowed. I'll try. Okay. So we're going to do this. Ryu, uh, you know, you, what you got to do is you kind of got to like, so you can see if you can see me coming towards you. All right. Go on down there. Got faith. It's going to be great. This is the content we come for. This is live. We are in the wild with the 40 for 40 race prep. Okay. All right. Uh, can you guys see that okay? I mean, I see down the sidewalk. I yep. think I see green. It's yep. very, so far away. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. All right. So just keep it on the sidewalk, and then we'll let's let's see him run, and hopefully he doesn't wipe out. Yeah, that take. Ready? One. Sorry, our timer needs to get set up. Two, That's fair. Three. <laughs> <laughs> oh danger oh look at that look at that follow through look at that lean at the end okay. we learned how to go through the tape you don't great. stop before the finish Six line 6.48 so oh that's not for hey, me that was preemptive just in that, case that's not for me i'm okay <laughs> okay good 6.48 6 so that's like if you were in the nfl combine and you weighed like 389 pounds that's about how fast you'd run a 40 you could make it there's so, still hope yeah all i have to do is gain about 280 pounds and i'll be <laughs> all set uh so i run as fast as the slowest possible player that could ever think of playing football i mean that's oh here's that no, is gonna go now there now he goes got it Zoom. I will say, if you have not signed up or donated, you should do that because you got eight days, I guess. Well, we're also taking donations through the weekend, I believe. We're taking donations. Yeah, we'll take donations all the way up until Saturday um, at the end of the broadcast, if you really want. Like, you know. Um, but now, what was that being? 643? No, nine, one, one. Fine. 648. So now you know if you think you could do this in less than 6.48 seconds, and my goal is gonna be try to get it under six, although I'm not gonna practice. It's just I'm just saying that I'm speaking it into the world. <laughs> Manifesting like, secret. Um secret. If you think that you could beat 648, sign up. You have to be over 40. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. Or if you think I'm gonna win, then bid on me, pledge for me. But if yeah. you think Doug is faster. Pledge for Doug. Doug, Doug for Victor. Doug is faster. Victor goes out and runs all the time. Victor like runs marathons for St. Jude and like does all this cool mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. Pledge for Victor, man. He's in better shape than me, probably. So do that. But it's coming up September 10th. So please get on it. You guys need anything else before I go? You're good. Yeah. Seems pretty crisp and clear, by the way. So we'll we look forward to doing more of this in uh septed something Latin days. That's right. That's right. This the septi deal eve is I believe. Yes. <laughs> septi mm -hmm. deal eve is where we're at. Um, thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to do this broadcast with you guys and hopefully do some good for the world. Oh, and JG mm -hmm. is here. He's running. This Maybe he's true. faster. I mean, yeah. you only have to be fast for 
under 10 seconds. It's like nothing. You only have to be fast for a little bit. And one more thing I will say, please remember, you don't even have to be able to run. You just have to propel yourself forward because if I make it to the top three, anything I win, I'm going to send half to the charity of the person with the most creative or funniest run. So excited okay? for that. So yeah, you don't even have to, you don't even have to be able to run. Do something, do something fun for us. Roll All right. All right. We'll you guys have a great show. Cool. I will talk to you guys. All right. Thanks. All Bye. right. Hey, you're that was fun. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So <laughs> anything else? Yeah. Um, uh, other, other than what Lauren and I are drinking now. All right. Um, yeah, Lauren, what do, what do you I'll got? I'll be quick. Um, I shoved some curry in my mouth before this broadcast. So I was washing that down with some sake as I did a couple of weeks or whatever it was ago. Um, I do have another beverage that I will open up shortly, but um, got a little sake, cold sake. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. cause hot curry? Yeah. Yeah, like it's just yeah. better. Yeah. Um, so that's me for now. Yeah. Uh, I went with an NA to start, but this is uh, Erdinger NA. Uh, German brewery that this is their NA offering. And I, and I was like, cool, because I had not had an NA from Obese, so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, really smooth, crisp, good. Tastes just like a regular old, like, beer. Now, it's a malt beverage. It's not, so I don't know. It's still good, drinkable, but yeah. So I bought some of that. That was uh, quite good. So cheers, folks. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Lauren. So let's get our guest on for today. Um, yeah. We have the uh, infamous, I don't know, Gary Ware, who will be joining us. And I know him through um, what I'm going to call this play sphere, because it doesn't really feel like an industry or, you know, but play things. Um, he, like many of us in that world, had like a corporate job that you get burnout and then everything sucked. And you're like, I'm missing something. And then realize um, all of the good that can come from play. Um, he actually has a book that is coming out very soon, actually, which I'm sure he'll tell us a little bit about called The Playful Rebellion. Um, so we'll get to dig into that a little bit ahead of time before it's even out to the public. Um, but he's an awesome human, a already dad, but new additional baby to the family as of uh, within the last month or so. Uh, and oh, no, he's not super, sleeping. Uh, we'll, he's we not could talk sleeping. about that. We'll see. But he's also he's magical. <laughs> you don't have practice. to say about that. I can tell he's, you. He's, he's, not not pra- he's not practice. He's got a five-year-old <laughs> and a new one. So he's not practiced before. This is not I, I know, but he's agreeing with me in the green room. I can see it. Y'all can. I mean, I can. that's fair. <laughs> I'm, he's, he's surviving and thriving as a dad. Um, yeah, so, so without further ado. Let's see his tired face <laughs> on screen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome, Welcome, Gary. Thank you. Oh my God! Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Comes in with the wow. intro music. Damn. Yes. Yes. Oh, magic. So we have to ask. See, see, you got something in your glass. What are you drinking there, sir? I, I I get this for Lauren because I word on the street is she likes to hang with the big daddies. Oh, so yeah. um, it's true. I got the Speakeasy Big Daddy IPA. Uh, it's okay. also based out of the All Bay right. Area where you are, Lauren. So. That's nice. that's what I'm drinking, and if I finish that, I have uh, something else in the fridge. So, ah, cool. All right, great. No promises. We'll see. Awesome. Yes, yes, we are talking about you, Victor. So get used to it. We need more intro music. Okay, <laughs> we'll okay. work on that. Okay. We'll step up our game. Right. Yeah. Okay. I was. Yeah. 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 So, hello, Gary. Nice to meet you. Nice Likewise. to meet you. Likewise. Having a nice uh, IPA on a nice. Is it nice out there? It's hot. But yes. Uh, and we can verify you're not sleeping, right? We can verify that. I'm not, but I will say this. Um, I was working, um, I was at a gig and I was in Vegas uh, for three days. And we had long days, but I think I slept more <laughs> there than I did at home. So you're absolutely right. Uh, the sleeping is not really happening. So it's, <laughs> right. cheers, but- cheers to that. Cheers to that, and congratulations to y'all, yeah. everybody. Yes. One month. He's uh-huh. one month today. One month today. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Lauren, I feel that since you and Gary are so tight, I feel 
that and you deserve i just feel you deserve the first question so <gasps> I, feel like, I always feel like that's so unfair because i'm like i know people's like well what do you all want to know right um, but that, that means you know the questions to ask do i but it's yeah. also okay we're gonna found, <laughs> let's foundation it because i feel like um <laughs> gary knows some of the people i know and like we've had some uh guests on lately that are also similar <laughs> vibes so gary knows jeff from previous streams um yeah. and uh last week we had no last week oh my gosh time is fine yeah. last week we had maddie maddie yeah. on and we were talking a lot about like play and the work world and stuff like that and so yeah. in sort of that yeah. vein i want to foundation this with gary you and i have a similar story of like being like terrible job and like i sort of stumbled into the play world i realized that I'd been doing it already, but I, it was not a purposeful shift. So I want to ask you sort of, how did you make that shift like on purpose, on accident? Um, because so many grownups don't recognize play, like don't know what to do with that mm -hmm. word. Um, so how did you play recognize that? Um, I didn't think I had a terrible job. I'm just going to be completely honest. I right. like my job. Uh, it's just that I was working way too hard. And it's ironic. So thinking back on my sort of rediscover of play, um, it's very ironic how I did that. So uh, my background is in marketing and communications. Uh, I worked for a lot of digital marketing agencies and, and at one point had my own. And a mentor of mine said, hey, uh, I know you want to get better at public speaking and you hate Toastmasters have you considered taking an improv class? And I was like, nope. Um, and like most people, when you bring that topic up, um, you know, you get that sort of fear of like, uh, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, and, and then what ended up happening was I took the class. I almost didn't make it. It was, it was a Monday, seven o'clock class. I almost talked myself out of going. I'm glad that I didn't because my company was paying for it. I somehow talked them into, uh, paying for it because it was personal development. But anywho, Great. Uh, for two hours, we played these silly ass games. They were just completely ridiculous. And I didn't think of anything. I was completely in the moment, uh, completely focused, completely present. And I went home and my wife thought I was drunk. Um, but I had <laughs> nothing to drink. Um, and that was like the spark that relit the, uh, the play pallet light, uh, pilot light, like in my soul. And then I, yeah, from there, I just got hooked and I took any improv class that I could. Um, I, you know, performed, I've been doing it for over 12 years, but the funny thing is I started bringing these games to my team. I brought it to my family. I like, then I was known as the improv guy and I would be at conferences and people said, Oh, Hey, can you do some of those improv games? You know, I, I hear they're pretty fun. So, um, that was my sort of introduction into play. Um, you know, the gateway drug to play. And then from there, I just sort of spiraled down the, down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so it's pretty, I mean, we've had other guests that we talk about play like Jeff and Maddie and Lauren, obviously. So, um, it's interesting because you think about, I, I, I think when Lauren was saying, not knowing what to do with the word play, do you feel like that word is almost like infantilized, 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 like made it so they try to make it so you you're not supposed to play because you're an adult and there's like responsibilities and all oh, that yeah, yeah. shit. Is that, is that what you see? Is that kind of, is that the barrier that you that part of the barrier that you've reached? Yeah. It, it's either people, um, you know, feel like, Oh, it's too juvenile or they have guilt and shame around it because most people like they play in private. And then because it's seen as a childish thing, if you ask about it, they just don't want to talk about it. Um, and so, yeah, so it's just like that sort of guilty pleasure. I'm like, oh yeah. Um, you know, I did angry birds on my phone and that was fun. It's like, all right, cool. All right. Dope. All right. Let's, let's, let's dig into this. So, and, uh, I see Jeff Harry up in the comments. Um, is, uh, is this good or since sliced wheat bread, not sliced bread, but specifically wheat bread. Yeah. I don't know what the wheat is, but okay. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. Extra caveats. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks for the specifics there. So uh, to piggyback on that bit, how do you overcome that? Like for me, like I will say yeah. the play bit is actually more about, I'm very much a, a like a task focused person. 
Yes. So for me, task, that's how I like, I'm like, all right, you got to do things, got to keep doing it. Like if I sit and just like, and try to enjoy something invariably very soon, I'm wondering why I'm not doing stuff. How do you get folks to overcome that bit? Cause that's, so, that's my, my big issue. Well, what I tell people, all right, let's just take it aside and like define what is play. Play is just doing something for the sake of doing it. Um, and it is enjoyable. It's pleasurable. Uh, so I said, don't you like pleasure or are you just one of those that just, you know, like to just torture yourself? Um, but I like to also separate it and say, <laughs> look, your work can be considered play. You know, uh, if you think about getting into the flow where you, time is just passing and you're being challenged and whatnot. Hey, that's a form of play. Now, the f play that most people don't do is the play for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to do that is... Um, just by it it seems counterintuitive but i just say hey set a timer for five minutes and just go do something that will make you smile and then i bet you you're not going to want to stop after five minutes mm -hmm. yeah i mean that makes a lot of sense it just i just go to stupid freaking responsibility freaking brain keeps jumping in and like i think we were sitting out we had a bonfire before everything so my kids were out there and it it, I did pretty good, but there's that moment of just trying to let all that go and just enjoying the moment. And that's I'm something I don't do well with. Adults don't. Most adults don't. We've been conditioned to like feel like if we're not doing something productive, we're not. Yeah, yeah we, we are not worthy and, and whatnot. I totally hear you. I totally see you. And the anecdote for that is just reframing the whole situation um, of looking like, all right, we have this glass here and this the beer is like your soul and you are keep pouring that soul out pour to everything that you do. And you think that it's going to replenish you. The truth is, is not. So if you want to keep working when you're about like 50%, what can you do to sort of fill yourself back up again? And that's where the play comes in. So I reframe it for adults and say, Hey, look, if you want to keep working, you need to like, create some space where you can do something that's going to make you feel good uh, there are studies that show adults we are like we're just humans we suck at gauging our energy levels we think oh you know what you know what? i'm just going to push through for like another two hours i'm fine no fuck no you're not let's just be honest everybody out there can, can i have that on like repeat in my life as i wander around like in my house wondering what you know, why do i have all this stuff to do <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> think you're gonna be good. You're gonna be, think you're gonna be productive. You're not. You're not. Over and over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Gary, there's a level of me that believes that it's it might be hardwired in us to resist play, and the reason I say that is because, and you can dispute me if you want. Um, I'm a homeschooling dad, and one of the things I tried, I not tried, I implemented, but it was rough going in the beginning, and that was letting them and giving them a direct time that they could do anything. Um, it blew their mind. They were frustrated. They were, because everything else in my homeschooling regimen is, okay, math, this, this, mm -hmm. this. You know, um, I am, you know, after you've done your math, we go over it. We after we go over it, you fix your problems. After you fix your problems, you come back. There's this uh, hierarchy of structure there. So then, when I threw non-structure at them, Gary, it literally took months for them to stop bitching about it and actually just feel free. I, I don't know where you know. A lot of it probably has to do with my my direction, but some of it was this really really. To me, I was mind fucked, Gary, really, because I was like, this should be the easiest part of your day. Like, go sit on the sofa, kick your feet up, and put some cartoons on if that's what you want to do. Like, literally, and they just didn't know what to do with that free structure. So, how does that play into the whole letting yourself go just eventually, you know, um, and having that time where you just let yourself go, where you don't really have to get anything accomplished? Mm hmm. Yes, you're absolutely right. And let, let me talk about the wiring first. Uh, it came from the Protestant work ethic, if, if anyone heard that phrase before. Uh, yep. The Protestants, they had this belief that 
if you were not working, uh, the devil will get you and you will do something not good. And so uh, the Protestant work, work ethic is you would work six days a week, 12 hours a day. The only day off is Sunday. And on Sunday, you go to church. And that essentially, you know, that is was the norm. Funny thing, um, Henry Ford was the one who suggested the 40 hour work week because the people in his factory were too tired and injuring themselves and they thought henry ford was crazy they were like what do you mean 40 <laughs> hours 40 hours a week five days you're essentially giving them a raise they're going to be paid the same they're working less um and that's what we have now that's the norm now so again you're right it's hardwired in us to like feel like we need to be doing something so that's the first thing so if mm. if that is you give yourself grace that is just how it is but the other thing because of our just environment that we're in now we have anything that we need at an arm's reach we are like sort of almost just like sort of like are we got to be doing something or it has to be structured to have that sort of like um you know downtime is challenging and i remember when i was young um and it was hard like it would be summertime and and my parents would be like oh just go do something i was like what she's like well you're not going to be in here and we would just be bored. We would be so bored. Uh, but after a while, we come up with stuff. Um, you know, that's, you know, how uh, me and my mm -hmm. sisters, uh, we created Splash Mountain in our backyard. Um, I wouldn't let my sons do that. That's completely dangerous. But um, <laughs> we came up with these awesome ideas. Um, and so um, now that I'm thinking about it, man. Uh, being a like, parent changes you, but yeah, uh, you I have to like, allow I feel like I need a better. I feel like I need a better explanation of what Splash Mountain, what your Splash Mountain looked like. Well, you know the the ride, right? Like at Disneyland, right? Water uh, log thing. Well, we didn't have water, uh, but it came out, and I think Splash Mountain was one of the first Disney rides that had like a PR campaign behind it, because um, uh, one we didn't get to go to Disneyland that often. Mm -hmm. For us, Disneyland was like a big thing. And so, like, we just loved, like, like when is the next time to go to Disneyland? And we have it happened to be on when the Disney Channel had, like, one of those free previews. Again, I might be dating myself. It was back when you had to pay for Disney Channel. It wasn't free. It didn't come with cable. And they had a free preview. And it was when Splash Mountain came out. And they had the guy, uh, Ernest, from Ernest Goes to Camp. Um, he wrote the ride. And you saw it from his point of view on the <laughs> ride. And we were like, this ride is going to be so epic. And we said mom dad can we go to disneyland they said no like didn't even blame like no sorry we don't have money for that <laughs> and so then they said go outside and play and then we were like all right cool let's what do we want to do and so in our backyard um at the edge of our backyard there's this big hill um and there's all these trees and whatnot we had skateboards and we made the skateboards go around in the trees and then there was like this drop sort of thing and then that was like our splash mountain <laughs> and we created it just because we were bored as hell <laughs> No, no injuries happened. Mostly, yeah. From minimal. Some we had worse. We had worse. Like okay, the time fair. when I jumped off of our um, uh, the awning uh, on our roof with a, a big um, patio umbrella, thinking I was Mary Poppins. That was worse. Way worse. Um, okay. Sorry to interrupt. I, I w just felt like I needed the visual. But yes, hardwiring, download, no downtime. <laughs> so you know what? You know. You know what? Uh, <laughs> Daddy Porter, I think maybe you shouldn't give your kids um, uh, unstructured free time. Complete. It might it might not end well. I I don't know. Little rule, little rule. Don't no injuries. Downtime, no injuries. No, they've grown into it, but yeah, it was it was rougher than I thought it should be. But um, you know, I was like, I'm just telling you, to do nothing for half an hour. I mean, I don't. Yeah, like that um, reboot. Right, Gary, I gotta get through this. This is very important. On the who that was that wasn't me. Count Dukula. Like, no, Count Dooku. Uh, I have no lightsabers uh, in my background at all. I don't know where they're uh, seeing this. Uh, is it? Do you need to tell us what? Well, is in it my the background, things underneath play? No. So um, that is uh, an X-wing, and then okay. the Millennium Falcon uh, is right there, uh, and then Lando Calrissian uh, is there. But I have no I lightsabers know. here at all. But the fact that they can, they know what a Count Dooku lightsaber is, and they see this it somewhere. Is, I feel like this is your crowd, and I feel like um. Dukula. yes, I did say that. <laughs> oh, no, right, that's a different. Right. That's a different right. count. Count Chocula, right? 
They're, they're cousins. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna... Is that like oh. the Rob Zombie song, Dracula? But it's Dracula. Yes. Yes. Oh, you can gosh. see how much of a Star Wars fan I'm not, Doug. But <laughs> we've got some audience participation who definitely is. Um, they said cancel Greg. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. I feel we're like harsh. Is, we're harsh. Yeah, Gary, it's I'm a regular fine. occurrence that this comes up. And it's in right. all caps. It's in all caps. So I'm serious. John Chalk yelling. No, John Duke Straight <laughs> yelling. <laughs> I want to spit this all over me, and I have to go perform later. So please stop. This, it. this is great. I got the I got the improv guy to be rolling. I love it. Not even is there a great is there a, is there a Duculus serial? See see where this goes off the rails yeah, really fast. So nothing about really that sounds fast. appetizing. Really really fast. Does anybody have a follow up so they can save us from this? I'll Lauren. say something. <laughs> Lauren <laughs> saves the day. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll swoop in because I kind of interrupted part of Greg's question and your answer. Um, but you were, we were talking about the work ethic and it's hard to stop and it's hard to figure out what play looks like or be bored so that you can, can figure out what play looks like. And in a Star Wars segue book segue, your book is called The Playful Rebellion. And I know you, so I know you are a not a small Star Wars fan. That's the book. Ooh, um, well, and it just I have been very... gaining weight, so yeah, I'm an I'm a extra large Star Wars fan. One more time extra, for that book, extra. please. Let's get that close up. The Playful Rebellion <laughs> coming Double fisting, soon. double fisting. There we go. All right. There so The go. Playful Rebellion. Um, Star Wars vibes. Fighting back the work ethic. Um, what... What do you even recommend? Because like for kids and adults, it is really hard to force ourselves to get bored because there's so much at our fingertips. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's your question? I'm, I'm what, what tell, tell us what you're telling people. What do we do? How do we, how do we fight? How do we fight the, uh, how do we become rebels and fight the work power? Well, the first thing we have to do is acknowledge that there is this sort of force that is oh. pulling that is pulling sure. us. <laughs> on uh, there, yeah, there, there's a force that is pulling us either to the dark side or to the light side. And the dark side is like the status quo. The I need to work, work, work. I need to see the world as a proving ground. Um, you know, I can't relax. Uh, yada yada yada. Or there's a group of rebellious, you know, playful rebellious people that actually think that the world is a playground. And when I mean a playground, a playground of possibilities, where instead of seeing people as your rivals, you see them as playmates. Um, and in order to get to that state, uh, you know, that sort of utopia, you know, uh, and, and maybe it's just because I live in San Diego and, and it's 72 and 70 most of the time and I get a lot of vitamin D. So for, for all you East Coasters, you can just say, shut up, crunchy boy. But what I'm trying to get at <laughs> is that it is possible to, you know, see the world as a playground to look at the things that you're doing and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to bring some levity to this because I want to enjoy it, even if it's something like mundane, like, you know, doing invoices. Uh, but it does require um, a shift in thought um, to do that. So let's at, let's do the first thing, the whole thing about being bored. Um, you know, what's, what's wrong with that? Like, um, again, we see bored as a bad thing. Um, go back to the Protestant work ethic. You know, they thought if you got bored, you will do something that is probably illegal. Yes, some people do that. Um, however, if you think about some of the best ideas that came about, um, one that the first thing that popped into my head, Hamilton. Hamilton <laughs> happened when Lynn manuel Miranda was on vacation in a hammock reading the biography of Alexander Hamilton. And then he had this idea, oh... Um, what if this could become a mixtape? I, side note, I love that this has become like children's book, turn the page sounds. I really enjoy this. Yeah, yeah the sound effects are quality for sure. But uh, yeah, there is like this whole mental shift that's really hard. Um, and also to that point of the boredom bit, like I know like, like Greg and I have teenagers, so they've grown up at digital age. So like mm -hmm. the idea of being bored is awful. Like that is because they're stimulated all the time. 
and you're you right. know, I, I don't know, I don't know how to combat that sometimes because their their lives are built around being able to communicate in that fashion. So I don't think it, the communication bit the problem. I just think the idea be able to just sit with yourself is sometimes problematic, and I, I don't know how to reach them to let them know that it's okay to to disconnect a little bit. Is there anything you'd suggest for that? Because yeah. yeah, I'm speaking specifically to teenagers here because Yo, yeah. So the the if you can create an environment where like for example maybe take them out to the woods and then uh you know have some time where uh you know the devices don't work um it's probably going to you know suck at first uh just because if we think about when we have our devices this is the thing that we don't really talk about when we have our devices every time we jump on you know um Fortnite, or we check an instant message or something like that, our brain gets a hit of dopamine. Dopamine is that neurochemical that is pleasurable. It tells us like, oh, we want more of this. And before, like I mentioned the thing I'm going to mention, it reminded me there was a study done with bonobos, monkeys, and they strapped them. This is, again, don't don't come at me for, for animal cruelty. I just know the, 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 the study. But they strapped them to a chair and they had them key in a sequence and every time they keyed in a sequence they got blackberry juice like in a little syringe like in their mouth i know as i'm saying this this sounds very cruel this is just <laughs> a study don't 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 uh, come at me but um so every time they got it right they got blackberry juice they got blackberry juice and then they were curious on if when they got it right or if they got it wrong like if it wasn't as potent would they stop trying well guess what Ooh. Well, I'll ask you what, do you, what do you think? Do you think they stopped trying? I, yeah, I got booted Would in the middle of that. Would you try harder? Exactly. They... they tried harder. So uh -huh. sometimes they got a pure blackberry juice. Sometimes they got watered down. Sometimes they got none. And then they tried harder. It was so bad, they unstrapped them. And they could leave if they wanted to. Their other monkey friends were at the door playing. They stayed. And they kept uh. going at it. That's just like us with an email. We get an email and we get oh that boop. God. And then this could be the email that is our client that's saying, so, hey, I love you. You're going to get a lot of money. But most of the time it's, hey, uh, I'm the prince of Nigeria. Can you spare me $10,000? <laughs> but yet we keep trying. And so I say technology, um, it was meant for good, but it is sort of like rewiring our brain to be addicted to it. Um, and so when we take it away, there is going to be a withdrawal. Our bodies are going to go like we're like coming down from Coke, uh, from like one of those binge weekends in Vegas. So, all, so we just have to acknowledge that is just a normal thing. But once we can get through that, then we can have more control. So my question is, who's in control, you or the device? And for kids... If they grew up with it, they don't know anything else. So yeah. you just have to have sympathy for them to say, hey, look, this is rough. Like that one time when grandpa, um, you know, was coming down from um, heroin. It's all good. We got you. I'm joking. My grandpa wasn't on heroin. <laughs> <laughs> the he the most relatable sure, story. <laughs> he was just making sure y'all were listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Y'all still paying attention or what? Right. I thought, I thought it was. I thought it was like that. What's that movie with the with the with Steve Carell in it, where they're tr taking his daughter around to like right? A, yeah, and uh, the the grandpa is like doing drugs because he's like, I'm doing drugs at the end of my life when it's better. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Like, yeah that's, right. Right, that's right. That's where that's where I thought you were going. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of sunshine. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. where I thought you were going. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Gary, real quick on the process of. Uh, Writing the book, is it as difficult as a lot of people say it is? This shit was hard as fuck. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. However, in the spirit of being the play guy, I found a playful way to write the book. Um, I honestly did not want to write this book. Uh, uh, this The concept for the book came from a play challenge, a 30-day play challenge that I did where I invited adults to uh, create playfulness a habit. And then a number of people said, man, this would make a good book, like a companion to this challenge. Uh, what have you? Like, what are your thoughts on that? And then I'm, all right, but I don't want to write a book. Like, I, like again, that seems like bloody murder just to sit down. Like, when you think of these artists that write books, they said, just me and the blank page or me 
and a cursor. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> why, why would you want to do that? Like, I, again, that does not seem like play to me. However, I love telling stories. Um, I can just talk people's ear off. And so um, I got connected with an amazing editor. And so what we did for uh, nine months, um, we had a Zoom date um, every Friday for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, and first we outlined what the book was going to be. And she helped me uh, create it um, in a way that made sense for a book. And then we just took it chapter by chapter and I would tell stories and we recorded it and then we would get it transcribed. Um, and then she would give me challenges. So like I would talk about, um, you know, different play personalities. And then she would say, all right, this week, can you go get some sources for some of this? And then let's talk about that next week. And then, so then that would be my homework. I would go and do that. And then I would just tell her more stories. And then we have like over like, I think like 60 or 70 hours, if not more, of just video that all got transcribed that became the first draft of the book. That, for me, was better than having to sit down and have to write like 5,000 words per day or some shit like that. Yes. I, too, don't love the, you can do anything the blank piece of paper. I'm like, no, like I want a little bit of constraints. Like yes. that sounds terrible to me. So I applaud you for figuring out a way to make it work and be interesting. Cause that's, that's what it is. right? So like play is like the engaging thing. Like when am I excited to do something? Yeah, that was fun. We had, yeah, we like, and then I was talking about some of the playful things, like the stuff in the book. And we just had a moment when we just did like a, like, all right, cool. Let's, let's do a dance party and like turned on some music. And then, uh, you know, we had fun. Like, again, it was something that I looked forward to. And I'm like, wow, th we're actually making some progress. Um, and th it was challenging in some like, some respects. You know, that gremlin, uh, the back of my head, like, started coming in. It's like, seriously, who the fuck's going to read this book, Gary? Like, really? Are, are you are you making this shit up? I'm like, shut the fuck up. We're almost <laughs> done with the damn book. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so I, it's, I'm so close. <laughs> So anyways, um, but that's the thing with uh, playfulness is that, uh, yes, playfulness is inherently pleasurable, but it doesn't mean that it has to always be. It doesn't always have to be fun. That's why I stop saying fun and happiness, and I start to say joy. What are the things that are going to bring you joy? For some people, running brings them joy, but some the people. act of running is not fun always. However, mm. like maybe when you're done, you know, when you get that runner side, that is joyful. Or the thought that you're pushing yourself, you know, whatever. As you can tell, I am not very athletic. So I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about in that area. However, to Could some be. people, it yes, to some people, it's, it's joyful. So. <laughs> Excellent. Y'all got uh, second beers or no? I got one. I, I opened. I have, I, mean, a, I, guess I have a heated question to ask Gary. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah, feel like that's good. more important. It's yeah, not. trust me, it's not. Oh, is it, we're going that way. We're going that way. Very, very... Okay. Oh, we're going. Right, we're going that right. way. I'll do this first. I'll do this real quick first. So, um, I had sake <laughs> to go with my curry. I opened a, yeah. my first first beer, second beverage. Um, I think it was the other week that I had a motor oil beverage. Um, I have a different motor oil this week. And um, it is number 13, and it's all I'm covering things. What does this say? Um, we have salt. roasted peanuts, sea salt, and cacao. Um, it is also cacao. higher AB, ABV, but it's, I've been drinking down. it a little bit. That's cacao, that's the, is that the right way to say it? I don't know. You sound, like, you sound like Lightning McCream. Cacao. I mean, yeah, you did. Cacao, cacao is true. I mean, because there's cocoa, but like this is like that's. Cacao. It's, is it different? I have to research beans. I don't really know. This is delicious and chocolatey and um, all the things I like in dark beverages. And I've been sipping it and it's great. So you get the peanut out of there. Um, let me think about it harder. <laughs> and have another swig. Yeah. <laughs> That's a dog um, special though. It doesn't get any more dog special than that. I mean, I feel like a little bit because like it's definitely got a chocolatey vibe. Like it's not, it's, not dessert sugar, but it's definitely on a sweeter, like chocolatey versus like roasty dark. Um, mm. But there's like, I could see, like if I sipped it and we're like, name flavors, I wouldn't be like salty roasted peanut. But like, if I think about it, I'm like, okay, like there's kind of like that on the front a little bit, but it goes into chocolatey quickly, so. <laughs> right, that and, 
That and key lime. I never had so many key lime beers in my refrigerator ever done. You're welcome for that. <laughs> um, any other beverages, or is it time for? Yeah, I got one real quick. Yeah, bring yeah. it. Isn't it? Yeah, oh so this no, is, this, this one. This is what Greg gave me. Lakeside uh, Summertime Ale from uh, Stevens Point mm -hmm. Brewery out of uh, Wisconsin, correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see how this is. You, Why you is see... Greg's face doing that? Ooh, look at that can. Mm -hmm. That looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Gary's hazy. can is cool. Doug is yeah, hazy I... from Stone. Look at Stone. that can, Doug. Look at that can quick, buddy. I see it. I was like, look at that can. You know me. That I'm is a can beautiful. Right yeah, I know. That's... It's yeah, it's from another Stone, special. Stone um, out here in San Diego. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tropical citrus. Yeah. It's juicy. It's a, uh, what's it, 6.9? 6, 6. Yeah. Not too bad. Fun. Yeah. That looks fun. IPA vibe. Oh, 6.7. Forgive me. 6.7. Doug, is it nasty? Yeah. I don't know. I just... Uh... It, it I feel fine. like I need to. This was from Greg. Head. You got a lot of. I didn't head. like that. Either. Greg yeah. does the not Greg. Okay, Greg was making a face, so I feel like I need to know what Doug thinks. But also, Doug is a, yeah, a heavy a pourer and is committed to the beer mustache. I was not a fan of that. So you sent it to Doug. Well, it, it was just one of the ones that this guy grabbed. Yes, it was. You know, I well, I don't assume because I don't like it. It is. Else, but, That's fair. You know. So, how do we feel? That is breaking up. It's uh, pretty mediocre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not straight bad, but it's pretty neutral. Right. It's not yeah, it, the right thing about. Yeah, it was pretty mediocre. Right. Right. Yeah. Worth a shot. Well, well, yeah, and I was hoping he would like it more than me, but I was just not a fan. It, it's not bad. It's not. It's I, not I, bad. It's just it's kind of me. Right. <laughs> right. I, will, I mean i will say though that like kind of like okay like when you, you eat with your eyes first right so like presentation kind of matters and doug mm -hmm. was like this is the thing i'm opening next and greg's face was like Ugh. i was like yeah. this is not promising sorry, doug. <laughs> sorry. so hey, he yucked all over your um, yum yeah I know. we are we're still unfortunately in an age of and i don't know how it went through your house gary or how you've gone through the first two years of covid but We've had to deal with COVID and we're still dealing with it. And there are people still quarantining and all that. So um, this question goes to Gary first. Gary, you you have a newborn too, man. Tomorrow, you have close contact with somebody who has COVID. Monday, you find out that you got it and you have to quarantine. Okay? So you get to pick two of these shows to watch oh, during right. quarantine. This question took a turn. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Ready. What are you watching? You have to pick two. Two. So. Oh, shit. Only two? <laughs> Only two. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is some deep. Oh, this is hard. This is a deep cut. <laughs> oh man. All right, all right, all right. You know what? Um, since since I since I have COVID, I'm, I'm probably going to feel bad. I want something that's going to make me like sort of laugh. So uh, or, or feel like awesome. jovial. So I'm going with, oh, dude, it's still hard. Um, I'm going with Ducktales and Ninja Turtles. Right. Okay. Okay. Lauren. Lauren, what you got? <laughs> this is hard. Okay. I mean, I feel like I'm like, <laughs> it's like the version of dating, but non dating it. Of I was like, okay, like I know these, but like I like didn't watch a lot of these religiously in the way that a lot of people did. Um, so that's why it's going to be good if you have to go back and recap for a week. Uh, I feel like, okay, I feel like. <laughs> So I feel like the ones that I would choose based off what I know, because some of these I'm like, I'm not sure what that shows about. I'm gonna choose I would choose um Ninja Turtles because uh turtle time action and pizza. Uh also Inspector Gadget. I love the I love a fun uh like invention. I feel like those were always like like even just like the theme from what I remember of Inspector Gadget was like go go gadget like rollerblades skate things and he'd like extend stuff and it was just cool so i'm going inspector gadget and teenage mutant ninja turtles look at that doug right. doug you there maybe 
Doug, you there? Doug? Hello? Is Doug there? I see his headphone. Oh, yeah, he's so talking. I'm going to go with DuckTales. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm Duck here. DuckTales. All right. So, Duck Tales. Yeah, I'm going to go with DuckTales and uh, Inspector Gadget. Those are my two. Oh, look at that. And I'm going to Greg. third Inspector Gadget. Okay. I love the Inspector Gadget. Okay, we can watch party some Inspector Gadget. And Transformers. But I'm like Gary. That That's pretty tough. You know, I don't know about y'all, but I know y'all are going to laugh at me. And y'all probably laugh at me in the comments. But the Smurfs is underrated. I'm just saying. Is underrated. I Okay, <laughs> can you explain this? Because I... Several of those shows, I'm like, I know, but I don't know. And like Smurfs, I was like, I remember Smurfs existing, but like, I don't remember the show strongly at all. Like, I don't why is it remember it why is it, why is it worth watching? I don't remember. I just remember. I just remember enjoying the conflict between the Smurfs. And like, there was an outward conflict with Gargamel and stuff. Yeah. But there was always like inner conflict between them. What well, was that one that was, you know, there was Smarty Papa Smurf. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then there was oh, always that, a who was that asshole Smurf? And like nobody liked them. The one with the glasses. There was grumpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, was that and then, not was it was asshole Smurf not his name? How we have like sassy Smurf and like smarty Smurf and like asshole. Smurf. It was an asshole. It was so I forget what it was. I don't. Brainy. Know. Yeah, was Brainy. It Brainy? Was, I don't know if it was Brainy, but it was the one with. Yeah, it was probably Brainy. <laughs> Brainy. Why you gotta hate on Brainy people, man? Right. Uh, Jay, she's going to talk about Smurfs to her blue in the face. Ah! Uh, uh, can I ask, does anybody, does anybody remember the show that tried to rip off the Smurfs and it was called Snorks? Yes, I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yes, yeah. what was wrong with the Snorks? Nothing. Yeah, it was they just they like, had the little they snorkels. Just, they had, yeah, it was just like the Smurfs, except, yeah. Yeah, I, that was a complete rip off <laughs> right, so right. That was something that was back in the it, file that I did not it, it remember until now. Storks, and I was like, storks. "You're welcome." It was a rip off of. But that, Doug, do you consider the Jetsons a rip off of the Flintstones? No, because uh, time period is different. Well, they they had well, a crossover. That's the only thing that was different, though. That's yeah, true. They had a crossover. You know that, right? So then it was a rip off. Was it? They had a crossover episode? Yeah, they did. They, yes, they did. Yeah, and guess what? George Jetson was born this year. August. Yeah, it, August. It was, it was like just August. just was born. Yeah. August 20, 1st of yeah, 2022. First. Yeah. <laughs> we are about to be in Jetson's territory. Why don't they do a reboot uh, of that? That would be fun. Maybe because <laughs> all the technology back then was like cute, and now like it's just like Ready Player One is like the end of the world. Like they could be even... apocalyptic yeah. version of the Jetsons. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh my god, that be... would actually be really fascinating. Yeah, what year would it take place in if they redid it? it has to be further in the future because clearly we've looked. I feel like we should have learned that the future was not far enough into the future. Like we're not there yet, so yeah. I feel like it'd have to be like. Mm. Like way future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna get back to play unless y'all have a car, unless y'all have a comment about this. <laughs> they should make a they, they should make a Black Mirror episode. That <gasps> oh, Black Mirror with the Jetsons. With, yeah, future. I just want that robot, the the maid. Um, but oh, granted, Rosie. Rosie. Rosie oh yeah, yeah. Granted, like I guess nowadays they have robots that are even more intelligent than that. So you know. I mean, fully. I feel like I've seen so many robot like fail videos Touché. where they like try to jump and then like fall on their face that you're like, no, we're not quite there yet. Yeah, she she looked just like a vacuum to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but all these face. all these she big billionaires fun. are trying to all these big billionaires are trying to sound the alarm about AI. Because basically that's what a robot is, is AI, right? Touche. Have you have you seen those um Instagram accounts that were like all AI inspired? So like they I don't know, like I could just be talking out of my ass, so look it up. Uh but it was the it's a it's a robot Instagram account. And and they're an influencer. But it's like AI, ro like not. I think it's somebody AI. posting robot yeah. things, but like a a robot is running an Instagram account. Yeah, I think so. 
and and then no? it's not even a real person. Like she takes pictures and stuff like that. Look that up. Like yeah, it's not Ooh. a real person. That's like part of me is so many things like this. I'm like creepy. that's so cool and it's terrifying. Creepy. It's like creepy. Lauren. Cool and super weird. Lauren, it's creepy. Don't let's. There's no other way about it. It's creepy. Doug, yeah. is it creepy? Yeah, I think so. You're um, meaning like. The one Doug, the you're in, he is a robot. Like, Doug's Doug, not real. You, Doug's in our AI. <laughs> Doug, you sound like a robot. You want to reboot or okay. something, buddy? I'm going to do that. Be right back. Something. He needs a reboot. Yeah. What the hell was, was that? That's <laughs> Is that Gary? Gary? Yeah, that's, <laughs> he's coming in hot with sounds. Brings his own entourage of technology. I was like, oh. like, is that fucking Gary again? God damn it. This is what I was, we were talking pre, pre-show a little bit of like, Love oh, be prepared for anything. And I was like, y'all also yep. be prepared for Gary a little bit. We got to be prepared for Gary. Correct. Correct. So um, I'm going to ask him. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect for what my segue was to. Oh, I can't. Yes. So, um, let's talk race. Yeah, let's talk it. Let's um, bring it. So one of the things I think that is different between the races and um, I just think that in general, and I know Zach's going to agree with me, <laughs> but in the comments, but I just think sometimes in general, um, black people come off to me as bolder and more likely to say what's on their mind than white folks sometimes. Um, so that's why I'm going to bring this whole subject up. Is there in your research and in your studying for this book, for your job, for what you do on the sideline, for when you talk to people, is there any difference between the mindset of white people and the mindset of maybe another group, maybe black people or Hispanics? Or is there any, do you see any racially, uh, I don't want to say stereotypes, but tendencies um, in any of your research or, um, I, you know, because I, I like to say that sometimes it feels there's a gap there between. Experiences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel that there's a gap between um, fun. And sometimes I don't think white people are as fun sometimes. And maybe that's just me from my view or my angle. Because there's a lot of black people that aren't fun, Lauren. Trust me. There is. Believe you fucking me. <laughs> okay. I will say it. I can say it. I'm going to say it, damn it. But generally speaking, is there any... Have you seen any of that? Does any of that play into this? No, it or does, I'm just it, being an asshole for just asking? No, no, no. Um, <laughs> so, in regards to play at work, um, a lot of people of color have a hard time with that because <laughs> of the... He's fun, damn it. <laughs> he, 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 she, it's okay. <laughs> I am a fun guy. Yeah, fun person. Gary, I am fun. I'm fun. Right. So Don't you I see? Fun so seriously. <laughs> I am so serious about this fun, yo. Instead of what that person. feels like work. If you have to say fun. that you're fun, all I'm saying. Are you really right. fun? Are you really right. fun? Right, right, right. Anyway, Anyways. I, I interrupt you. With, yeah, let's right, so, talk to you. All right. <laughs> so, um, uh, if you think about cultural and, and looking back, yeah, um, a lot of, um, especially people of color, they, when they play, it is very jovial. It, it is a lot of like, you know, it, it involves the whole community. It involves the whole family. Um, get around black people when they're playing spades. <laughs> like it could get, it could get crazy. Um, however, in my learning, um, I learned that there's different ways that people play and that, and it mm -hmm. is culturally. So um, I, I learned this from Dr. Stuart Brown. Um, he said there there are seven play personalities, and the one uh, that um, uh, black people who associate with a lot of times is the competitive. They get ultra competitive, and that you know that works for them. You know they uh, you know tend to really mm -hmm. double down on it. It's a lot of fun, uh, but some other cultures um, for them it that doesn't resonate with them. Um, mm -hmm. That's why there are seven. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right uh, that culturally it's different. Now, however, bringing this to work, people of color um, often feel like they, they can't be themselves. Uh, so they, you know, they don't want to bring how they act and play at home to work. Um, and because, you know, they feel like they might be ridiculed and they have to hold up a persona. 
And so that's what I've seen a lot of. Like when I would go mm. and, you know, do some of these workshops, that's where like the, the you know, the white people, like no offense to any, like I'm just calling it like it is, you know, tend mm. to like be a little bit more open. And then it takes a little bit more time for the people of color to like sort of let loose. Mm. And, oh, and, okay. So it's opposite of what I thought in the, yeah, work it, in the workplace. It can be. Wow, it can okay, be. Okay. And then, so that's the whole thing about play. And one of the things I, I've uh, found in the research is that when you play and people are openly playing and they don't, they're not like sort of forced into it, they go at their own will. Mm -hmm. um, if you had EKG machines on everyone's head, so this is some Black Mirror shit right here, you would find that <laughs> everyone's brain waves are in sync uh, just hmm. because they're playing. Hmm. Um, and so hmm. um, there was a study done in Taiwan hmm. where they had um, elders. So the challenge was the elders were lonely um, and then the young people needed mentorship. And so they partnered a young person with an old person. And hmm. the directive was for a month, you have to spend an hour a week together. Um, and for the control group, you know, you can do anything. You can read a book, you can uh, watch TV, you just got to spend an hour. And then the experiment group, they had them play Nintendo Wii. You remember that, like, you know, like Wii Tennis mm -hmm. and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. an, hour, um, an hour a week for a month. And they found that after the month, they surveyed all groups and everyone, you know, just by spending time together, hey, guess what? You're closer. Makes sense. The interesting thing was with the group that played Wii, so they were playing, not only did they feel closer to each other, but they had a stronger affiliation with that demographic as a whole. So mm. the younger people had an affinity for all older people. And hmm. then the older people had an affinity for all um, younger people. And it's just one of those things when you're playing, hmm. Hmm. Um, in order to play, you have to set all of your beliefs aside for the rules of the game. So your unconscious mind is like, oh, I trust that person. Oh, cool. Um, and you don't realize that it's sort of being hijacked and then you're starting to like not just that person, but people that look like that person. And hmm. so, um, Daniel says facts. I don't know what he's saying facts about, but um, all right, cool. I'll give you that. But um, so just, um, just a preach moment. I don't even know if I answered your question. Um, no, you did. No. Yeah. No. Was, so I'm I, I was right asking there. if there's general differences. And yeah, the, I mean, you're just telling me that they are in certain se segments. Yeah. So, yeah, um, Doug, I asked the race question when you were left. So I kind of um, figured when I jumped in. <laughs> right. I just, I basically accuse all white people of not being as fun as black people, basically. So I I'm probably going to get roasted for this, but that's fine. I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> and Gary told me that I was wrong, and especially uh, in the workplace. In okay, the workplace, workplace setting. Right. environment. Um, and then Zach brings up a good point um, that white people also trust the workplace more, and then they have less fear of being fired for other uh, no reasons other than institutional bullshit. So yeah. that is Zach's uh, opinion. Uh, Oh, look you're at that. Talking about like environment, like uh, where you're at, reading the room, if you will, right? And look at that, Zach. You got a round of applause, man. Yeah. So there you go. We 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 warn all of our guests about you, Zach, because you're Zach. <laughs> so, yeah. Everyone, we line them up. It's the first question. You got to worry about Zach. And then the second or the first statement. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Anyway, Lauren, do you have a follow up to my? Racially charged question. I mean, I guess I don't know if it's like necessarily a follow up, but I feel like there's um, something that Gary is talking about that I I just wanted to like uplift and uh, second is just like like play when like true play because there's I feel like a lot of people potentially watching this and like we all have experience or know or are familiar with the like like play being associated with fun for grown ups and so it's shifting to forced fun things like we're all going to do an escape room and like, or like laser tag. And like, some people are like, I don't want to do laser tag. Um, so play being something that you self select into or to what level you select into. Cause sometimes there's like a game or an interaction or a situation where you can be like a leader in this play situation, or like I can take direction really well. It's so like, there's different ways for people to engage, choose to engage in play. I think is really important because, um, to be able to do that is super important. It's, it's like, um, it's a consent issue, I guess. Yes. But also it is about like the study that Gary was referencing. There's so much about application because there's so much theory and thought leadership. And like, even just like in school, we like learn all these ideas, but then like when you actually have to implement stuff, like 
it doesn't always pan out. So being able to apply things and being able to self-select into things. And even if it is like, okay, we're going to have a team staff development day, but giving people some level of how much they want to step in or not, I feel like is a super important part of play that I don't know if Gary can or wants to speak more to, but like that's because I feel like so many grown up and work and just grown ups are like forced fun. We're going to go to happy hour. And you're like, I'm an introvert and I don't want to talk to people. Like that's not fun for everybody. <sighs> yes. No, mm -hmm. I agree. And you nailed it. So I, I have nothing to add. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> just just <laughs> non rant <laughs> uplifting, I guess. <laughs> Doug, do you have anything, or should we? We oh, I think um, I think Gary wants to talk about. Gary, are damn you... man, that was so dramatic. Books can serious. be, can't they? He said, okay. "I think Gary wants to talk about boom." I was like, "Oh God, I'm putting on the spot. Don't make me." All right, he was like, "I don't know what's happening, but it's very serious." I, I, I know, very serious. So, what might you be? What are we do? reading? What are you reading? Yeah, what are you reading, Gary? I, I'm not really. I fucking wrote a book. Um, <laughs> uh, but that—that's yeah, but, what you're reading. <laughs> but, but but I thought it was. Hold on, I thought it was this. I thought it was a little spy lady told me that you wanted to talk about this. You want to talk about this book, Gary, right? Or am I wrong? What book? Oh, I don't I haven't Did you show it yet? Here we go. Production. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. All right, perfect. All right. Props. Let's go. All right. So my friend Monica Guzman, she wrote a book. Um, and I, I, it's the book that we all needed in 2016, uh, through tw now. And it's just basically about how to have discourse with people when you don't see things eye to eye and how to have curiosity. Um, and the, you know, the, um, uh, inspiration for writing this book came from after the 2016 election when, uh, Trump was elected and her parents voted for Trump and she had to go to have dinner with them. Um, and then, uh, and all that stuff and, and how so many families are divided. And so it's a really good book that gives actionable things, um, you know, to actually have a conversation with someone without like, you know, going to fisticuffs just because you don't see eye to eye. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, this may be an unpopular opinion, uh, but I don't believe you need to just sort of silence someone and cancel them just because you don't see eye to eye. Um, you know, as long as there's you know, we're cordial towards each other. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was something I was like, oh, there's hope. Oh, thanks. So yeah, big shout out to Monica. Uh, pretty good book. I Not pretty good, very good book. Very well written, a lot of research. Um, she, she did a lot of focus groups on this. Um, and like the, so a lot of people said, all right, so what do I do? Well, other than read the book, uh, it, it comes from a, like a place of curiosity. And it reminds right. me of um, like when we were kids, we were just sort of like, instead of judging right away, we were just like, oh, tell me more, tell me more. All right, what, what do you got from that? Instead of trying to be right. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that after the like, conversation that you have to change your POV, you can still have your POV, but you can at least hear from someone's side. And then one of the things she talks about is values. Like if you, you know, mm -hmm. if you try to align values, like, oh, cool, you know, understand what someone's values are. You can start to see things from their perspective and see, all right, how can we just be on the same page with values? Like if maybe your values is integrity or a value is um, open-mindedness or something like that, like how can you really start to see that and understand someone's values as a way of seeing where they're coming from? So, yes. So thank you, Lauren, for asking me this question before I had a few drinks so that I knew what book we should be talking about. Prompts, ready. We prepare some things a little bit. Just so, one or two. Uh, that sounds awesome, though, and I love I love the curiosity thing because, like, it's the understanding, right? It's not just the I'm going to prove why you're wrong. It's the like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Why do you think that? Like, where did you have you seen that in the real world? Like, that's yeah. Let me just understand. <laughs> yeah, and it reminds me. So, an interesting thing is, um, I used to be a bartender. Um, that's what I was out out of college, and when I went to bartending school, they say. Um, 
you know, when you're at a BART, the two things you don't talk about is politics and religion. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, you know, I feel like in this day and age, it's like all that people talk about. It's like, oh, you know, before you can even have a conversation, hey, where do you stand on this? I'm like, hey, what the fuck? I'm just here to have a drink. So, hi. <laughs> nice hi. to meet you. <laughs> and, and it's interesting because, you know, where I worked, um, you know, I'm pretty sure there were some people we didn't have the same sort of political views, but we got along. We had some great conversations. And, um, yeah, we were, we were really cool. So uh, that's that's the stance. And, and so again, some people say, what do you mean you don't want to talk about politics? Well, do you have to seriously talk about politics all the time, every day, always? There's so much more. There's so many other topics, like Ninja Turtles and Duck. Well, exactly, that's what I was going to say. Smurfs. Like, uh, that's how I'm going to start. Like, yeah. I'm, right. I'm going to take Greg's thing. It's like, hey, if you can only pick two and you have COVID, what two shows are you going to watch? That's my, my opening line. I love a fun question. I mean, like, I don't want to force fun on people. Like, I love the interesting, weird questions. Tells me so much. Right. Better. Speaking <laughs> of interesting and weird, Doug. <laughs> so actually, uh... one, of the comment, one of the comments in there, like Jonathan mentioned, like, uh, MAGA Republicans, we don't have commonalities. Um, I, I like to say that we did. And maybe it's still there. Um, those Very. people um, uh, have been brainwashed. Uh, there is a, a book called The Art of Persuasion, and it talks about cults and how people um, how people end up in a cult. And the people that end up in a cult aren't who you think. Most people think, oh, these are like oh, stupid no. people. And people that end up in a cult are very intelligent. But it happens like so slowly that they are just on Doyle so, situation. Yes, that's mm. the thing. So uh, you're right. There's probably some people that are too far gone and they need psycho, psychi, psychiatric help. But um, yeah. Don't so. don't get Doug started on cults, but we are going <laughs> to right, we are gonna get Doug started on. What's this, Doug? Uh, this is a book by Katriana Ward called The Last House on Needless Street, which is excellent it is creepy and disturbing it's uh the way she plays with perspectives in this is unbelievable um uh, my wife read her most recent book sundial she liked that but i just started with this because my uh our our uh, show friend chuck wendig recommended it so i uh picked that up really good uh lauren not for you though our got book. it i was like uh, creepy look like, no nope, don't want I, that yeah I yeah, saw Gary clap, right. and Gary, you know this one? Yeah, I was like, are you no, familiar with No, but I've this? heard about it. And so I, I'm oh. excited to give that a, give that a, give that a, uh, give that a go. I is like that, that you've just like heard it's of a, this book. It's really good. Doug, is it horror? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, creepy horror? Yeah, and I'm not saying it either. Okay. Okay. Because right. you know, I... Right. I say it, I say I say that word weird and, it, and I get made fun of oh. on my house all the time. Oh. It's fine. Oh. It's fine. I learned oh, in college. That that I, too. I learned in college that I say artichoke wrong. <laughs> See? I didn't sound, know that. You I didn't like know a, like, that, that was a cute. problem. It's cute. It's like something like my son would say. I learned in like artichoke. freshman year of college that that is not how you say it, and the general populace is not we're not on the same page apparently and no one ever corrected me until college and you're, and you're not going to change right you know i you know i i when i think about it i might but i generally am not thinking about it when it shows up in a sentence so already um already choked and it's never too early to ask gary do you <laughs> do you use oh. a top sheet contentious do uh, you use a top um, sheet okay I, I used to but my wife doesn't so I oh, so, so you kicked the top sheet to the curb because of the lady. Is that what? Of I'm course, saying? yes. Okay. Of course. Um, okay. Do you like avocados? Hell yeah. Do you like gravy? Uh, do they have to go together? No. Avocados and gravy? Ooh, I don't know yeah, if I. Do. I'm a, yeah, no, no, no avocado and gravy. No, but gravy. Yes, I'm a saucy guy. Like I love sauce. So, so saucy. It, it, Gary, it, it, yes, gravy. Yes. Yeah, Very these saucy. are these are arguments that we've had here endlessly on this stream on Friday. So whether it's top sheets, Doug does not agree. Doug does not like avocados. And who the hell didn't like gravy? I forget. It was Kelly, it was Kelly Pressbury. <laughs> the Pressbury showed up with Oh, a Lord. She was like, gravy's nasty. And like everybody in the show was like, what? <laughs> it's a flavor liquid for tasty right. things. <laughs> right. 
She, I was like, she, she, <laughs> were you going to say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> she, and she like doubled down. She was not, I, not letting that one go either. Right. So, yeah. And you notice I, rep I repressed it all, Gary. So, like, well, if you if she didn't like gravy, I didn't even want to know who she was. Sorry, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> well, yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the thing, right? Like, we, we're all about, like, being in our squads. And so it was like, oh, what, you're an anti-gravy? Oh, my God. It, like, I totally right. get it. Yeah, yeah. It's, right. it's, wi it's yeah. wired. Talk about being wired. That is wired in us, again, from right. tribal days. Um, however, right. we can have empathy for people. It's like, you know what? Yeah, it's all fun. It's, it's all fun. fun. We'll, we'll shame fun. you for food here, and we'll shame you for top sheets, but we do not okay. shame for boo-boos. That is our line, and we're sticking to that. Okay? Yep. Drink what but you we drink. Will, we will shame you out of this stream for food, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have no shame in that game. Right. Oh. <laughs> so, What's wrong with gravy? I'm, I'm curious. What's wrong I, I don't gravy? understand. I still don't get it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, gonna gonna here's, here's what I'm going to say because, like, I am a gravy okay. lover and a, give me all the good sauces. Gravy, there's no but also, excuse for that. There's no me excuse. coming from a like the Gary book, like curiosity oh. vibes. I like to ask a lot of questions because I'm like, wait, what do you mean you don't like? Let me understand where you're coming from. Like, I could. If Are, I'm they gonna, Are they white? Are they white? No. The no. person who brought this up is not. Um, <laughs> right. But I feel like, right. I feel like okay, like right. maybe. If I'm trying to think outside the box, like, okay, maybe gravy. <laughs> I like gravy, but like, is gravy the right, problem because that, like, the, the food stand on its own without the gravy? I mean, I want sauce, but like, should no. the food be able to stand on its own? Is that part of yeah, it? Is it a but... texture thing? Is, no, is no, no. It... no, 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 Lauren, but like, you can't expect. I mean, I love gravy, but I'm just. But Lauren, know, but Lauren, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down for you. You can't expect mashed potatoes to moisturize themselves okay that's it okay so i don't need, like the idea of you moisturized mashed ma potatoes you need it moisture and that's why you add the gravy moist okay? potatoes <laughs> correct so I look we'll never fat. be able to unmoisturize right. gravy my mashed potatoes and i blame you for this the did whites just get this signed away? <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is, Zach, do you like gravy? Do you like gravy? Oh, right. Yeah. Zach likes gravy. Come Zach, on, maybe. Zach, do you <laughs> season your food? Do you, do you like seasoning? Yeah. Right. I, right. I, I, I season. I actually do a good job of seasoning my food, but uh, I went to a yeah. Thanksgiving. Gary, this is an inside well, joke, but <laughs> gravy for turkey or mashed. There was no yeah, gravy Gary, this for Thanksgiving. Is a... This is an inside joke, but Zach's kind of serious, I bet you. Oh. Well, what temperature? Um, well, are we using, are we in a in an air fryer or like or on a grill? Like, what, what are we What are we at? Expand on that. I think he means a smoker because I smoke my wings at 400 and I'm damn proud of it. I'm going to be doing that even more this, this fall time. Is that too hot? Zach thinks it is. He's just, I mean, what do you think, it. Gary? Oh, I don't know. Like, I've never, like, smoked wings in a smoker. I'm not What I'm do not you that... do in an air fryer or otherwise? You tell us what you do. 375 for about, really? like, uh, 14 See? minutes. Right. So in an not... air fryer? Because that's, like, different than an oven, right? So. Yeah. I, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's a convection oven. So it's a convection it's, oven. Right. It's not, not really. It is an oven. It's just. It's convection. just hotter. Yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. that's true. I don't convection a lot. I don't use that. Uh, I have an air fryer and I have an oven that I can use a convention oven setting. So, like, I'm redundant and white on, on both fronts. <laughs> it's all redundant good. Redundant and But do you season, Doug? Yeah. Of course he does. Doug said he seasons. So. <laughs> okay. That is true. He all does right. say that. And to, right. be fair, to be fair, I used to not do because my, my wife actually taught me about that stuff because she cooks a lot of, like, Indian food and stuff like that. So, Yay, like, and I was like, this is great. And she's like, yeah, you have to have the, like, not just salt and pepper. You need some pepper. I'm like, oh, okay, great. So now I've learned. So. Right. He's a convert. Right. I love it. That is amazing. Right. Also, salt and pepper is a great foundation because not everybody uses that enough. Right. So, Gary, um, what would you tell the normal average person about living life and not having to go too fast for you? Meaning sometimes we, sometimes life moves real too fast and by the time we know we had just, you know, this a month, two months have gone by. And we haven't done anything for ourselves. Do you do you talk about doing things for yourself in this manner or, or yes. in this area? 
Yes. I thought you were breaking out the Ferris Bueller for a second. Me too. Uh, yeah. I was like, where is he going with this? But no. Um, I take it back. Yeah, right? Bring it back. Bring it all home. If you don't stop, the, you know, to to look at what was it going to, it's going to pass you by. But um, yeah. to, to that point, uh, I talk about in my book, I talk about three types of rest. I talk about uh, macro rest, micro rest, and meso rest. Uh, macro is sleep. Now, I'm not trying to criticize you and say you need six or seven or eight hours of sleep. Uh, I know as a new father, like, I'm not getting that. All I'm saying is, is the quality of sleep you're getting good? Or are you essentially, uh, like, draining your battery to zero, passing out on the couch, uh, you know, in your own sweat and whatever, and then waking up five in the morning with a headache? No. So, like, quality sleep is important. Um, and then micro is in between your work. You know, are you just working, 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 or are you adding some space in between to do some stuff that's going to bring you joy? And this is the thing that most adults have a challenge with, uh, especially adults here in the U.S., uh, meso breaks. Are you taking time away from the work? Are you stepping away from the work? Um, you know, this is vacations, if, if anyone knows what that is. Um, but even if you don't have the luxury of taking a vacation, um, you know, can you step away like on a Friday for like half a day to spend some time with your family or or do something, you know, that brings you joy? So that is my advice to people like so that you can experience life. Um, there is a, a gal. She was a hospice nurse. Her name is Bronnie Ware. No relation. We have the same last name. Um, but um, she uh, wrote this book, The Regret of the Dying. And one of the major regrets is I wish I didn't work so much. Uh, I wish I, you know, spent time with people that I love. Um, so, yeah, when you are are expired, are you know, are you going to look back and be like, damn, man, I missed my chance? Or are you going to take a moment now to sort of uh, pre, like, start to paint the picture of what you want the end of your life to look like? I know that sounds kind of like a downer, but yeah. And again, I don't even know if I answered your question, Greg. Uh, <laughs> Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I just want to say, breaking news, uh, Serena Williams has played her last match ever. She just lost in the U.S. Open. Um, and she's one of my favorite athletes of all time. Um, I was a tennis person before her, but she's iconic. She's a legend. She's amazing. And, Doug, another thing happens on Friday when we're streaming. It seems yeah, like all kinds of things happen. Usually they're not good. Yeah, uh, I would consider this a good one, but um, at least we can reflect on a wonderful career, a wonderful inspirational person. And anybody has any other comments about Serena Williams before we let Gary go here? She's the goat. Gary? I don't know why I pushed that button. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. It's sad. It's perfect. This is sad trombone. Doug, Lauren, anybody else want to chime in quick? Uh, I can't agree with Gary Moore. Uh, you talk about goats of sports. There is no greater goat in a sport than Serena. And she right. never gets mentioned. And what was yeah. great was seeing certain male tennis players they're talking about, like, who's great, the greatest tennis player. And then they're like, Serena, like, why are you even asking me this question? Because they were clearly trying to point at male tennis players. Uh, nobody's, mm. been as dom nobody's been as dominant as a sport especially in an individual sport as her. She's amazing. And the idea that she goes and she publicly talks about like the struggle she had, like when her kids were little mm -hmm. and just being very public about this is hard. This is a struggle. I had this, I had this, like, and it's a super duper public figure. That's really difficult. And, uh, you know, kudos to her. Lauren? As the female in the stream, I feel like this is a cop out, but I kind of want to say ditto because uh, y'all are covering the bases and like, yeah, let like not like let, but like guys uplifting a woman. Great. Do it. I'm into it. I support all the things that were said. She's amazing. And for the record, Venus is still around y'all. She didn't retire yet. So we still have Venus Williams yep. out there. I'm um, kicking butt. And she's just another story. They're both, we always lump them together, but they're both, iconic they're both in their own ways they're both yep. inspirational um and you know they want to be lumped together that's part of it so we will lump them together a little bit but on some level we need to um also separate them and understand that their legacies are different and um it all comes the same it's just beautiful love it i have nothing good this nothing but good and thanks for all the entertaining hours 
Uh, thanks for all the inspiration for our young girls. I just love it. You see how many more black females there are now um, on the on the circuit that are American. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but we got Coco, we got Madison Keys, I believe. We got a couple other ones that are just coming up now that have uh, cited the Williams sisters as their inspiration. So um, yeah, cheers to all that, and I'm happy. I'm gonna raise a glass for Serena, um, and she's still in the court there saying her goodbyes, but. Cheers to that, y'all. And um, we, we got to say another goodbye, unfortunately, because Gary has something to do. But, I Gary, know. we want to thank you for everything. We need to bring you back to discuss other really important things. Right. Like, like Transformers. Like, yeah. Or, or, um, or the Centurions. Yeah. Like, are they or really this, a ripoff? Or this one. Pick two. <gasps> this Pick one's two harder. Here, Gary. This one's harder. Pick two here. All right. All right. Fresh Prince. <laughs> Fresh Prince and yes, you're right uh, about that. Fresh Prince and Family Matters. There we go. Uh, Martin was Urkel. a close third. Oh, Urkel, above, Urkel above Martin. Yeah, Urkel above Martin. Okay, okay. But Martin was a close third. Uh, one of my favorite Martins of all time is the one with him and Gina. They went on that that vacation, and it was supposed to be in, like out in the uh, in like a, the island or whatever. And they saw that chinchilla thing that was under the bed. Do you remember that episode? Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, and that whole thing was him, with him fighting it was improvised. Like it, uh, I just crack up. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, Gary, um, one last. Um, is there anything that you didn't get to discuss? Anything that or you want to hit on again? Say? No. Yeah, or I don't need to hit it again. We we hit it and quit it. Uh, it, it oh. I'm not like that. I'm just on the topic. Like, you know, <laughs> like, mm. oh, I'm just, I'm just asking how it rolls, man, or whatever. I, uh... <laughs> I got I got to go perform. So, so yes, yeah, so right. I'm about, but right. yeah, I'll be back okay. another time. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Um, Lauren, you're done. Remind us, when does your book come out? Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, I should probably say that. September 13th. September 13th, the book is out. My birthday. Woo-hoo. You're, you're welcome. Celebrate. <laughs> and this is only for for this group because the only people who know that i'm not telling people about this but if you want to hear the audio version of the book it's already out just because of a glitch so if you're into audiobooks the audio version of the book is already out so you can awesome, right. on audible and you get to hear me audible, okay. read okay. my book to you anyways oh that must right. have been fun that was fun That'd be great all right, all right. Well, sexy. Thanks, Gary. All right. Um, as they say, break a leg. Yeah. Um, and they, all the legs. they mean that, right? They all mean that the in a good way, not yes. a bad way. I've never understood that, but we'll let that pass. Cool. Um, That's for another day. We'll, we'll discuss that <laughs> yeah, next time. Yeah, so, thanks, really Gary. Good. All right. Uh, Bye, Gary. Thanks, Lawrence, for bringing Gary on. But we can do that right now. Yeah. Bye, Gary. Yep. All right. Sweet. But I'm um, let. Let's get back to this real quick, though, because we didn't get to respond, y'all. I feel like I need – I was still, like, absorbing all of the titles you, on here. Yeah, can you drop the, the thing so I can see the bottom of it? Okay, there we go. Oh. Yeah, that yeah, – Let's I'll get drop. in behind this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get yeah here we go. Um, three that you don't need to care about. I know y'all going to kill me on this one. But Already? I don't care about the Roseanne is fucking annoying to me. I, I mean, I know that that was cool, but she's just an annoying person. So, like, no. Friends, I never... Shoot me, y'all. I never really got friends, ever. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I just didn't. Uh, it's just not for me. And Cheers, I saw almost every Cheers there was ever. And I'm not trying to see that now. Um, it was all right. Cheers is cool. No worries, no worries. But if I had to be quarantined for a week, dog, with two of these. For me, it's Fresh Prince and Seinfeld. Seinfeld? What a, what a I, mix. What, I a, mix. I, what I, a combination. I know yeah. Seinfeld, Seinfeld doesn't like play well now, but it was at the time that shit was funny. Like just they did things so weird. Well, what do you mean it doesn't play well now, Doug? What do you mean by that? Well, first of all, there's no people of color in the show except for the one lawyer guy, and like it's and they they make fun of minorities quite a bit, and okay. uh, and so that's that that's not good. But like at the time, that you know, it's kind of like always people talk about The Office was uh, kind of groundbreaking because they did the whole fourth wall thing. Seinfeld was like a skit show, but not like it was so different, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. 
I don't know. I just I always found that I remember episodes of that show more than I remember a lot of shows. If that makes yeah. sense, like especially oh, comedy, because I am not a person who watches a lot of sitcoms. That is not my jam generally. Um, but Fresh Prince, of course, was just. It's funny Fresh. to watch the Fresh Prince and watch from the first episode. You watch how bad Will Smith is at acting in this first season or two, and how much better he is later is awesome. But that shit still holds up, though. That shit is yeah. funny still. Uh, me and the oldest son, uh, we we pulled out the first couple of episodes and we were rolling. This was right before mm-hmm. he slapped Chris Rock, and then we kind of put that on hold. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> I think I think that for me, it's definitely or Lauren. I'll let you go first. But Fresh Prince is definitely you can one go, of mine. no go ahead go because ahead. Fresh Prince go ages. First. Besides the fact that Will slapped Chris, other than that, that shit aged really really well. So if you can get mm-hmm. past the whole. Will Smith had a bad moment thing, which he did. He's that's really not his character, um, and you know that by if you take if you take out the slap, Lauren, the rest of his career is slapless and this this. Res- I mean, he's a respectful guy. He had a weak moment because the dude was coming at his wife. So, yeah, I, I don't even know why we're back here, but we're back here because we're talking about the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So, give me the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I don't even remember. Um, our friend, our, our friend, um, Ryland. Our, our friend Ryland put Boy Meets World. Yeah, Doug. And I don't even remember Boy Meets. Okay, Bur- so Meets here's World. the deal, folks. So I'm I going to say, like... hold on, Lauren. I'm say, I'm just gonna get it out. I'm gonna say Fresh Prince. I'm gonna say Martin. But mm-hmm. Married with Children too. Damn, I love Married with Children. Go on, Lauren. So okay, so I'm gonna go. Like, there's clearly some generational vibes happening here because, mm-hmm. like, I know enough like i like recognize i think i was like maybe put it up again but like all the sh- all the titles on that page i was like okay i like know which show you're talking about but in terms of the ones that i like watched like yeah, i or- recognize all of these but like i don't even know if i ever actually watched 90210 personally i don't know if it was just, like, not my vibe the timing I or didn't. whatever so like i recognize it as a thing but I like never watched it, so like there's definitely some. Tiny... I watched nine hundred two. I watched Melrose, not nine hundred two one zero. I even also is. didn't watch that, so I can't help you there. Um, I was caught in the Melrose. It was one of those things where our friends went over. It was just one of these things that we all gathered for, and like um, we would go to my friend's house and we would all sit around okay. and watch and watch Melrose. So yeah, it was. But I don't even want to like admit that one. What else you got here, Lauren? Okay, so <laughs> Saved like, by the Bell never saw that shit ever. 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 Interesting. I mean, I know it was going on. I just never watched it. (laughs) Okay, so I feel like... A bunch of these I've never seen. A bunch of these I've never seen. Sort of. I mean, like, not sort of. Like, I've seen, like, clips of... or Like, not clips. Not like I've watched YouTube. But, like, I've seen bits and pieces or know a little bit about all of them. Like, I know enough about all of them. In terms of actually watching full episodes less than that and for in terms of like committing to watching it more regularly even less than that and so okay i feel like if i had to go with in terms like quote unquote quality i was it rylan who maybe said it i like i might have to also go boy meets world fresh prince just in terms of quality and watch like what i've watched but part of me wanted to go either boy meets world or full house and family matters because um like the urge, the urge or the timing of watching them, like Boy Meets World or Full House, I think we're like the, I'm like after school, done with homework, all this, like, I'm gonna like turn on the TV and watch a thing. And then when I was younger, I was like, ah, Star Trek is scary. And I turn off the TV. Um, I'm better. <laughs> I like it now. But before I was like, ah, weird looking things very suddenly after sitcom friendly childhood television um and then family matters i believe was one of the like tgif shows yeah yeah rylan mentioned that times. but like tgif like that is like an iconic like looking forward to it end of the like it's a, what was like two hours or whatever on a friday yeah. night that like yep. that is a like moment that is a vibe that i i like fresh prince had good stuff and like great characters and like I could see how it holds up and it brings up a lot of um great points but also like family matters was just like an iconic time of the week <laughs> that like holds a place in my soul I don't know 
I mean, I was younger and like Worf <laughs> looked really scary at the time. Sorry, JHG. I watch it like TNG. I'm into it. But like, but and I was like littler. Is it, it was jarring right after Full House, okay? <laughs> and then growing paint. So growing paints, I get I've always gotten growing paints mixed up with silver spoons. And silver oh spoons has that ass hat Richard Schroeder or Right. Well, guess what? Growing pains, um, growing right? pains, whatever thick. Yes, because because uh, Silver Spoons has Ricky Schroeder, who's a giant dickhead, and Growing Pains is Kirk Cameron, who's a giant dickhead. So, oh, different strokes. Okay, different okay. So they both have dickheads. That I, okay, I now okay, right, right, right. Dickhead TV. I got it. Um, but growing, no, wait, Silver Spoons was the one with that fucking train that went through the house. A train. Um, I was. Yeah, I was. Silver Spoons was about, you know, a silver, a kid with a silver spoon, and he had like all the toys and shit. He had that big race car bed that everybody wanted. Um, and I forget the storyline. Like, like the storyline was like, oh, rich white folks are just like you. And that's the whole. <laughs> <They're just> <laughs> right. <like you. laughs> right. Wasn't that the whole theme of it, though, Doug? Do you I remember? Do y'all remember? So, y'all in the comments, y'all remember and Silver had, Spoons. And he, and, he had, and he had a black friend. And he had a black friend. friend and everything. Yeah. Spoons, spoons, plural. Right. And yeah. then Ricky Schroeder turns into this MAGA, mega, MAGA, mega religious douche who doesn't, he's a religious douche who doesn't like respect anybody else's um, religious freedom but his own. And he wants to push his religious freedom, his religion on everybody else. He's a fucking idiot. Okay, I like then he turned into a MAGA. And it's just a fucking mess. I absolutely, I'm glad that that show's not on here because that shit makes me sick now. But back in the sure day, though, none dog, of it looks familiar. Back in the day, though, dog, I love that shit because, again, I love, like, this is what a rich white person has. And, like, in my view, it was more like, damn, is that what a rich white person has? Almost like, want... um, like celebrity <laughs> voyeur version vibes where you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's her. what it's like. Right. Look, Manny's right there. Everybody has a black friend. Right. I'm everybody's <laughs> friend, Manny. So I, <laughs> it's great. Make me everybody's friend. Yes. I could be your I could be your token black friend. Rick 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 Schroeder. Get it right for the MAGA dude. Rick, yeah, Rick yeah, 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 yeah. He changed it so he's not Ricky anymore. He wants to be called not Ricky. Oh so serious. Oh, okay. Rick. So I'll call him Ricky Schroeder. Thank you. Yeah, fuck him. Because right, because he doesn't want that. Right. Um any, uh, who else opens their pants and puts their hand down like like out? Okay, Bundy's also like, that is a show that I'm like that. I remember it was I very do know misogynistic. That, that is oh my not God. that one does not age well for sure. No, 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 no. Well, I don't know which ones. I, I got the Fresh Prince um, Banks still pretty good. That aged well, in my opinion. Y'all uh, go back and look at Fresh Prince. It's on HBO Max. It's good shit. Unless you're too pissed off at Will about hitting Chris and all that, then give it, give it, give it more time. <laughs> but um, I don't know about the rest of these though. Like, I know that Growing Pains, uh, not Growing Pains. I know Married with Children did not age well. I'm pretty sure Roseanne neither, did not age well. Roseanne neither, was, did, neither did Home Improvement because that is oh. super sexist. Oh yeah. wow, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. But I, I would suspect that Friends age well, right? Friends no, was, no. Friends wasn't bad, was it, or was it? Well, it, one I never found it funny. I, I will be. Perfect. I never it's found it funny. funny but I'm saying like in a misogyny, sexist way, or and Ryland like just said it did not. Ryland agrees that oh. friends in age well. So, oh, okay, okay. I feel like okay. it. I mean, yes, okay. but it relatively maybe better than some of the others, but yeah. like not great. Oh, right, right. Here's another one, Night Court. Night Court. I never uh, saw Night Court. Manny you, mentioned I've, Head of the Class. Do you remember Head of the Class? That sounds familiar, but like, no. I have no idea what that is. Head, no. Head of the Class was actually pretty great. Howard Hessman was in it, who was, uh, who was in WKRP in Cincinnati. He was Johnny Fever, and he was like the teacher in Head of the Class. I, oh, okay, okay. I bet you different strokes age well. Um, That story was, you know, it wasn't, I don't, you know, it was another. It was another rich white family adopts a black kid. Be happy for the rich white family. White saverism, yay! Right, like. But there was a lot of lessons there um, in that show, if I remember. Um, yeah, growing pains at Kurt's camera. Wait, okay. This another one lost, unfortunately. Who I don't know. I grew up. 
I feel like I feel like Frank yes, was going yes. to get out. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree because that shit was super white. That was. The only thing I mean, yeah. Oh, okay, also, okay. just the fact that like the they lived in New York apparently, and they like and hung out in some coffee shop all the time, and like their apartments were huge. Like all of it feels very weird, but like it's a sitcom and it's like imaginary, so whatever, I guess. Yeah, right. that's right. Robin Givens wasn't head of the class. Very young Robin. Givens. I looked it up. I do not Damn. recognize that one. Manny, Manny, can you, Manny? Why don't you pair serials with eighty shows? Say. Yes, yes. Let's have him. Ooh. Let's have him on and do that for a whole show. What Manny just pairing serials and eighty shows? Well, ahead of time so that people <laughs> can like play along. Doug, it was your. I'm not calling you out, but I'm kind of calling you out. That was. That was your responsibility. Yes, it was, Manny. and I have so, been slacking. So no, no, um, no worries. But get um get Manny in before the end of the year if we can. Yeah, I'll uh, do that. Manny, Manny I'll I think to you tomorrow. Brothers cool, and Manny. I think we all got. I think we. I think we got like all of November besides when we're gonna have a Grammy. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, Grammy, an Oscar wow. winner on. Yep. Um, name yeah, drop there. Name drop there. But um, yeah, there are probably eighty nine is when we're all naive and stupid. Not all, <laughs> but yes. Uh, what about? Okay, so what about this one, y'all? Before we get to Doug's third, what about the Cosby Show? Now, the without talking about Bill Cosby's like personal show. shit, Cosby the show. show itself, I suspect age ages well. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but I know that it's Bill Cosby so repulsive that if y'all don't want to watch it, I get it. I totally get it. Like so, I'm not even saying watch it, but if you take out Bill Cosby, which is kind of hard because it's called the Cosby Show, <laughs> um, did that did, did, did Cosby age well? I don't remember. I don't remember Cosby being over sexist or over. I thought Cosby was pretty I good. I don't. I, okay, I will just say like I. Oh, a different world. A different world. That's fine. I. I Google this. Different world is good shit. Yeah, that was good. Kadeem oh, Hardison, Jasmine Guy. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Um, that's one I should go back on for sure. Oh, wait, and then nobody... Just... You know, wait, yeah. wait. Can, can I also piggyback that Living Single Oh, was, was a great freaking show. Wait, and who was that? I was like, I know was that, that a good? Was that, did that age well, though? Yes. I mean, okay. that... Okay. That was um I'm trying to think there was another show where white women were doing the same thing and it it, it was horrible. And I, <laughs> no, and everybody loved it, but it was like, yeah, but Living Single was the original version of that. Oh, or I thought they said Living Single was the original version of Friends. I thought that's what they said. Maybe maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. And then Queen Latifah was in Living Single, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So Living Single was and then Manny said what I was gonna say. But um, in living color is I remember that. that is just classic. I don't think that's anywhere though. I I don't know if that's any. This I don't want to designing just, women. Greg, Zach mentioned uh, it, designing women. That's exactly what I meant. Oh, yeah. with um, what's her name? What's her name? Delta Burke and uh, a couple others. I can't remember. I only remember Delta Burke and my dad had the hots for her. But what? <laughs> <laughs> and that right? And that's when you are. That that's when. Yeah, right. Back in the day, eighties and nineties, like like, like what Delta Jay Kirk, G said. Gene Smart, Dixie Carter, Annie Pop. Gene Smart. Okay, I was like, I, go I googled. I that's when we used to declare it out loud. It wasn't one thing to find someone attractive. You had to say it out loud, Doug. You had to say, "I love." She's great looking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think we're very, very. You know, people say we're repressed now. No, I think we're disrespectful more. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, that's just me. Um, I can. I can find someone attractive and not be screaming and hollering about it and all mm -hmm. that. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're, oh, y'all are really talking about that? I was fucking kidding. No, I, <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're right. It was, it was, it was, I'm pretty sure it was designing women because it was like poor women, poor independent women, and it was poor independent white women. Now it was set in the South. So go with that however you want. But uh, yeah, I'm not watching. I feel women. like the <laughs> dot, dot, dots are very telling in this comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Are, Who cares, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're well past yeah, that. I never, I, I, I was around that, but I never, I never seen Dallas. Um, yep. My, um, so Daniel has a big issue with the House Party reboot. Um, I got an issue, uh, Daniel. I have an issue with the White Man Can't Jump reboot. So there you go. Wait, <laughs> I, I, they're rebooting that. 
What? They're rebooting White Man Can't Jump. Wait, yes. in a in a series or in a movie? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a movie remake. Yeah. Y'all are making anno- me Google a lot. Of it's things annoying right to me because that shit, that shit's so classic. I can't. I I, I told my kids we got to watch that really really soon. That is just a classic movie. We got Benson. Um, yes, for Benson. Robert Guillaume. Robert yes. Guillaume, maybe. Soap. No for soap. No. I, I, I've maybe. never seen soap. Have you? Um, it, it, was so- a, it was literally like a comedic soap opera, which I didn't like soap operas, so I wasn't going to watch a comedic version of that. Yeah, Jay, she's right here. There's no question. You just can't reboot my main camp jump. You just, mm-hmm. why, what the fuck? Rosie Perez. Uh, Willie Har- Woody Harrelson, uh, Wesley Snipes. I mean, come on. Leave it be, y'all. Leave it be. What? I have yeah, so many man, man. To, they're like, doing it. After they're this. doing it. Right, right. It's the pips. It's the pips. Right. <laughs> Dog, speaking of the pips, don't you have something over there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was quite a segue. We'll do that. What a, what a segue. Yeah. So I'm going to go with uh, one I got. The best <laughs> music ever. <laughs> what is happening? The Night Rider is. This is oh, Greg I was like, you were talking about beer, and then there's a cop. I was like, did not know when you were see, talking. About I was, look, I was telling y'all about ADHD in the comments. Like, you see the comments, you have to respond if you have any kind of ADHD. That's true. So I'm just going to show them, put Doug on the big screen so he can talk about his Tell beer. Tell us and about I whatever, and I'll focus. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I got beer mail today from Minneapolis. So I got Cabin Ooh. Crusher, a Kolsch-style ale with lime. So I know that would be something Greg might be uh, find of interest, considering his uh, love. Summit, is, Summit's a lager house, so yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Yep, so. Uh, yep, Daniel's right. Summit for the win, y'all. Knight Rider has had too many reboots. Listen, Knight Rider and David Hasselhoff, that's it. I didn't even pour that aggressively. Look at that. That's a lot. That's Yeah, I didn't even pour that that aggressively. That is like, I'm just going to give you all the head. Yes, I said all the head. Enjoy that. (laughs) Doug, is David Hasselhoff, did he have any asshole moments throughout the years? Or did he come out of the game? I'm sure he had some with uh, Baywatch, probably specifically. Uh, uh, he had he had, the, he had he had that really crazy video where he was hammer drunk eating a fucking hamburger and fries on the floor when he was talking to his daughter and his daughter recorded him. Uh, but that was okay. that. But that made okay. people feel that made people feel sad. So for sorry him for him. Yeah, and he's a big he's a big 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 deal in Europe. They love him over there. He's big in Japan um, too. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah, I, sorry, uh, <laughs> sorry. I don't know. I to me, he I, was Night Rider. And that's it. Like, without my that dumb car, and I love the car, but it wasn't anything without David Hasselhoff. He was, he was a machismo, Lauren, when I was young. That yeah, was he's big in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, Rylan bringing up. She was a softball for the original. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Shit, was it Richard Richard Dean Anderson? Was that? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. We. We didn't mention The Simpsons because, um, Zach, I didn't specifically still mention on. them because it's still on and it's still going forever. And I also um, were any of the shows on there animated or were they they were all live action? Real? Who? The thing that the original thing that you had posted or put up here. Oh. Boy Meets World, Friends, Cheers, Roseanne, all of those. Like, those are all real people, right? Like, none of these were animated yep. also, which is, like, yep. a whole other world. Because, like, you can do so much more with animated than you can do with real people mm-hmm. because, it's like, safer feeling, kind of. Yeah, and I stole, um, just so y'all know, I, I steal these graphics from a guy named, I think he's on Twitter, his name is Damien. Um, I, I'm going to post them out on my thing. So I want to give him props. I wanted to give him props at some point. I was going to pull up his website. But he does these things all the time, Lauren. And we just have, we actually have a thread of people who were at that too, called The Greatest Debate. And I just post them in there and we argue about it. Jay, she's in there, Doug. We always put the, we don't really do much arguing, but we, we talk about The Great Debate. We talk about meaningless shit is basically um, what goes in there. And it's just a good place to go when like, you just need to take your mind off of what the hell's going on. Yeah, when you like, pull out all this contentious stuff. <laughs> yeah, like um, today, uh, the lady of the house got a call that she was in close contact with someone who has COVID. 
So then our house has been on this COVID scramble this afternoon. And then mm. I get it. Then I get a note that she just ran over an apostle on the way home. So yeah, we're having fun here. <laughs> <laughs> what an adventure. Yeah. On Friday. But then she sends it to our house thread that she needs duct tape. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? Is it related to the possum? So, I, it, it, it's all in the stream, and I'm like, I'm on stream, and I can't help y'all, so y'all can figure it out. But yeah, a whole lot of shit's going on. But yeah, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mention Dookie Hauser. Yeah, um, Dookie Hauser is another one though. Who's Dookie Hauser? Who is that? Neil, Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, okay, he's not. No, he's I was not wondering. Great. No, he is great, and he has a new, he has a new TV show that's I hear pretty much a banger on him. Yeah, um, I haven't watched it. It's uh, basically like uh, as a gay man dating. And I can't yeah, oh, yeah. I heard about like as an older gay man dating. Yeah, right? yeah, saw, yeah. I don't remember what it's called. And I thought it's on Netflix. It's on one of the ones I have, which is not the ones I don't. The one I don't have is Hulu. Learn. Um, I have less than you, and I like I yeah. saw some trailer, but it also might have been on my social media and been like in my eyeballs. So who knows? But I saw that also. I saw that trailer also. Right. Well, thank you. It's like is it okay. uncoup uncoupling or something like that. I, I believe you. Something. Thanks for Island though. Um, if you look up Neil Patrick Harris and then Netflix, you find it. But um, and then Rylan will probably tell us what the name. Yeah, of it's, it's is. called it's called Uncoupled. That was Uncoupled. Good job. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, do I remember that shit? Because I'd never watched that in my life, and I still somehow knew that. I, Our yeah. brains are magical and terrible and confusing things. He's, I can't remember where the fuck I put my keys, but I can remember that dumb shit that I've never seen him. <laughs> no, or what right. you came into the room for. You're like, I came in here for a reason. However, I have no idea, but I can remember the lyrics to that one song from sixth grade. Right. <laughs> so I guess we should start wrapping this thing up, y'all. Um, next week, we have uh, big events here, y'all. We have the 40 for 40 race on September 10th. It's happening. Doug, I think I'm going out this weekend sometime to do all this. So this will be fun. But I'm, I'm, I'm still planning to run faster than you. But if not, um, Doug mm -hmm. and I are both in. Y'all can pledge either one of us. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, it's it's early. Well, it's kind of early. Like, I mean, I mean for like, Zach. <laughs> right. Right, right. I can't remember where his keys are, but knows the theme from Growing Pains, correct? Yeah, <laughs> probably true. I was like, do you know the theme from Growing Pains? No, no, I don't. But so, I know a lot of theme songs, just not that one, because I never really got into that show. But That's fair. So this is the Friday before the Friday before the 40 for 40 race. Um, <gasps> Lauren, so do you have anything to say as one of our main pub people? Uh, yeah, it's happening and it's for funsies, but also for serious because we're trying to do some stuff for good. Um, if you haven't already and feel like trying to run to win, um, for speed specifically or for creativity, like Roberto had mentioned, um, feel free to sign up. If you haven't or don't want to run, donate because whatever you donate, we're just, we want to be able to have a, like, I don't know, jackpot if you will, um, a good amount of money to be able to split and donate to charities of people um, who are doing the running. We're going to be streaming. It's going to be just a fun, silly thing to do, but also for good. So sign up and or donate and or watch us um, or all of the things or two out of three, whatever, some amalgamation. Um, we'll be streaming. I don't know if we know what time the stream is happening yet, but probably weirder more in the morning time because running happens before it gets hot so to be determined but i may be on site somewhere hopefully the cell service is going well and we're gonna stay and do some running and commenting it's gonna be great so hang out and donate and it'll be lovely yes and doug and i will be the play-by-play -play and the analysis. I'm not sure who's what at this point. <laughs> so much knowledge. Or we're, right. We're both going to do it. Um, I, I'm well-versed in sprinting. No. Um, yes, you can drink a 40 for 40. Um, we'll drink a 40 for 40 for 40 and drink, also drink, drink do a 40 a, for 40 while drinking 40 and donate 40 and then join yeah. our stream. I just, I don't know who this is, but I would like to see them do a 40 in 40 seconds. Come on, let's go. Dude. A 40 and 40. Like, who, can you do a 40 in exactly Who the hell is it? We're gonna 
We're gonna hold them to it. You can get on the screen here, and you can do could forty do for forty. Um, back in the day, maybe, but yeah, a forty no, no. of what too? A forty of malt liquor. Ugh. Look at that. Hmm. Who is this doc? That's, that's, that's Gil. <laughs> Freaking Gil. Uh, Welcome, Gil. Yeah. Oh. And, I mean, well, here's the thing. You could do 40s of like a private stock would have been maybe one you could do. Maybe. Yeah. Or that, was, that, was, that was not so bad uh, as far as <laughs> malt liquor goes. But uh, yeah, OE wouldn't have been terrible either. Now, don't do fucking St. Ives or the worst. You guys remember, well, you remember Crazy Horse? I thought you were going to say Mad Dog 2020. No, Oops. Crazy Horse was this malt liquor that was like, you drink oh, I know one Crazy of Horse. And you would be completely no. fucked up on one bottle. No. And in college, the challenge was to try to drink two of those. No. And Why two? Just because. Because it was Well, stupid. because one one had right. you drunk. And I mean drunk. And then you try to drink a second one. Problem is you do that. Then you can do 40 of Mickey's would work, too. Because that's not terrible. But, yeah, but Crazy Horse was... Oh, that None was of it sounds good. really good. No. I All mean, right. Right. You have the opportunity to choose your level yeah. of adult. Choose, choose your choose your version of death by alcohol. Yeah, uh, right. pick your poison, I guess. But also join us and don't die or injure yourself. Hopefully, right. And I'm setting up some tequila sunrises or something, Doug. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, but we're gonna we're yeah we're gonna have some. I'm gonna see. I don't know if I'm a mimosas guy, Doug. I don't know. Mimosas are kind of weak. Like, I, mean, I, want, I need something with a little bit kick in it. And I'm not really a wake up in the morning and drink beer person. I'm a stay up all night and drink beer person. <laughs> but wake up in the about, morning. What about Bloody Marys? Oh. I'm, I'm not a Bloody Mary person. Neither am I, but it was just. Right. I've no. had good that's one. A, I'm a, that's a quintessential breakfast brunch drink. And I'm just thinking of like breakfast brunch drinks generally, Doug. So. Michelada? Um. Yeah, I, hell, we might even eat breakfast on set. Who knows what the hell's going on? Well, well, we could do, you could just pour a beer in a bowl of cereal and do <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I am not. <laughs> Screwdriver's another one. Yeah. yeah or, or like orange juice, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Orange juice and vodka. Yep. Yes. That sounds yeah. right. Okay. And then tequila, we need Gary back for the bartender. Tequila, tequila Sunrise, uh, Lauren, is orange juice, tequila. And then you put grenadine in it afterwards, okay. and then it gives you that sunrise. Okay. That red. Gives the vibes, a little the sugar. Uh, yeah. Very palatable in the morning. Yeah, screwdrivers are my early morning jam. Yeah, screwdrivers are really good. Um, again, I, I, I need something with a kick. And by the time. What do you mean by a kick? I mean, a kick of alcohol. <laughs> Mimosas. Like, okay, so champagne is not. Hard enough for the mimosas. You need a harder alcohol. Correct is what hard I'm mimosa. <laughs> right. Now, like a, what, would, what would be the? I mean, I guess it's a screwdriver. So yeah. yeah, I'm gonna do my. I'm probably gonna have my race done by Tuesday. So I'm gonna have it done. Still prepared. Right, right, and it's gonna be. I don't know my, my, my studio, my my studio people behind me. Well, you can't see them, but they're here. The secret um, studio people. They can edit it. They'll give us some time to edit all this bullshit. And, yeah. It's like you're yeah. going to edit your run. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Roberto's didn't say I couldn't edit it. So he didn't say that. So I don't care what y'all say. Be honest. Right. And also, edit I don't know. And make the time's going to be honest, but the editing, there might be some editing. In I hope there's sure. slow motion and chariots of fire. Mm -hmm. You might have to pay mm -hmm. for that copyright, though. Mm -hmm. I but mean... Anyway, we're going to pay for copyright anyway because we played Sad Trombone tonight, Doug. That's copyrighted, but the price is right. Yeah. Well, I, I don't even know. Is if it, really it's, copyright? Uh, I don't they know. copyright everything. Seriously. Right, That's also do. true. Correct. Capitalism. Right. Censorship. <laughs> um, speaking of censorship, Zach, um, I'm Where's going to censor... Going? We're gonna well, I'm gonna censor the rest of the stream and click end broadcast. <gasps> so <laughs> with that being said, it is that time again, y'all. What time is it? Since we never do ladies first around here, dog, and we should. Lauren or Lauren. 
Got it. Yay, non-mirror image screen things. It's very confusing. Um, oh, it is. I'm <laughs> cheating. Not cheating. I didn't have very Cheat. much... I didn't have, I did not have things, but I had sake, which I didn't really talk about before, but I had a glass of, not a full glass, I had some. Um, that was very tasty and crisp and clean and delicious and cold. Um, and then the nice. only beer that I opened, but it is a high ABV. I did my motor oil, oh, this way, motor oil, um, which is Alvarado and other half. It was number 13. I think I had a number 16, 16. the other week. Yep. But this one is a 13, so it had like different things. Oh my gosh, different roast peanuts, cacao, Lightning McQueen style. Um, and it was very chocolatey and delicious, and it is 11.5%. So it was enough, and it was very tasty, and I enjoyed it. So that's number one in beer beverage because it was the only one. But also, even if it wasn't, it's up there. It's very tasty. Excellent. And I only had one, so I'm just going to go before Doug, who had. Uh, a few. Uh, few. Uh, Doug gave me the California Ale. I'm still working on Doug. Um, and I'm going to finish this because it's tasty, good. Um, it's not normally what the North Brewery does. Mm -hmm. um, but I, they always probably have some low ABV light drinkers on because you can't just go in there and drink your damn. They, they produce motor oil all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good motor oil. It's good motor oil, but it's motor oil. And I see why it's one of Doug's favorites because they make the big black stouts, a lot of um, a lot of adjuncts sometimes, right, Doug? They or they, they they swim in the heavy adjuncts and sometimes not either. So they're all over yeah. the place with the big beers, right? Yep, they try a bunch of different stuff. They're not afraid right. to throw a bunch of adjuncts in to see what happens. Um, Absolutely. And um, so this is a good. I don't know why it's California. Probably the hops or something, but it's good. Love it. Wrap it up, y'all. Yeah. Okay, I'll go fast then, Zach, for your entertainment. <laughs> um, so I will start with uh, <laughs> this one was just meh. Sorry, but yeah, the, the, it, was, uh, it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Wasn't great. Uh, it's just I was hoping you'd like it, but I have uh, low expectations. Yeah. So and this one was uh, the NA from Erdinger, which I thought was really quite good. Um, very good NA offering. Tastes just like. And German style beer, like you want. Um, it's probably so, been around for a long ass time. Yeah, they have since like 1539 or no, something. no, no. I mean, the non alcoholic part, yeah, they, yeah mean, they, they've been brewing they, it forever. It seems like, yeah, that's something that they do as a companion. I think it's, we heard that from somebody else where it's just like, yes, we did. Germany, they'll, build, they'll make a beer and then they'll make an NA version of it, so they have that on tap all the time. So, that's right. Great. Uh, and that thing was my favorite with the cabin crusher, the cool yeah. with, uh, with lime. Well, of so. course, key lime. Is it key lime or just lime? Just lime, what, just lime. Just what lime. the hell is key lime, Doug? Give us tell because you're the key, key lime, lime guy. Let's see the key lime, key lime is a different it, all right. So key limes are generally like this big, they're really small. Like limes are you know a little bigger. It's just a different variety of lime. Oh, uh, okay. And then and, the key and, lime. And, 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 Key lime is a little bit um, more stark in its flavor than regular limes. Like it's a little more aggressive. And then key lime, key lime is the one that they use to make one of Doug's favorite desserts. And, yeah, I'm high. Right, and then they put it, a lot of it in beer because um, I literally have I think three key lime pie beers from Doug. <laughs> I like them. Are you gonna do a a, a side by side? I that should do. A, I should do a theme or something, but. Yeah, For comparison. yeah. Comparison. Um, Why not? Lie, 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 lines from the floor of keys. Wrap it up. Really? Zach is like very urgent We're, right now. Right? I don't know what's happening. We need Zach to be our producer. And there we go. And then we can have him tell us when to wrap. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, you, if you make me miss Mariucci Entertainment System talking about lime. <laughs> oh, is there a thing happening? I don't want to open that door, uh, Zach, but I'm curious. No. I, I don't even know. But what I do know is that we'll see y'all twice next week. Yeah. Um, we'll see y'all on Friday with Roberto and Lauren. Are you going to be on? I, undecided. Maybe. Surprise. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, I love but that. Expect Saturday. Saturday for sure. Um, but of Race course, you are you are more than welcome and um, probably expect it on Friday. But if you can, you can't. But whatever. TBD. <laughs> we'll see. Right. But Let's if not, what people say. <laughs> if not, we'll see you next Saturday for sure, Lauren. It's going to be an event in itself. Um, Doug, 
for the sure, for sure, I'll see you next Friday with mm -hmm. Roberto. And all of y'all, y'all have a great Labor Day. What are doing? Yay! Weekend. What are y'all doing? Real quick, Lauren, what are you doing? Anything? Anything? Anything special leaving your house? I Hiding. will be leaving my house, which I don't oh. always do, but I'm okay. gonna, uh, I do not have a green thumb, but my sister became a plant person over the pandemic and she has given, gifted me like for birthdays and other events, plants, but she's smart and gives me sturdy ones that I can help survive, not delicate ones that will die like an organ, which a different aunt gifted me and has died. Um, so I'm doing an adventure with my sister to a, a nursery. That's what they're called, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not a plant. A nursery. And we're going to get some pots and soil and like repot some plants that I have kept alive enough to need to repot. So I'm going to leave my house and go into nature some. Plants. Got it. <laughs> Doug, what do you got for this weekend? I'm going to be seeing my brother-in-law and my in-laws on Sunday because uh, my brother-in-law is bringing his uh, daughter to visit a university near us to check it out. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's the big thing. The rest is going to be just kind of putzing around the house, you know, trying not to do too much. You, Greg? Yeah. Relax. Yeah, no, I don't think much because, again, we're, we have a COVID scare in our house, so people are quarantined and Wearing masks and all kinds of weird shit. Let us know which stuff. TV shows you end up watching for the weekend. Oh. If it's uh, any of those ones that we posted on the screen. Uh, probably. If anything, it'll be Fresh Prince. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not really connected to any of the other ones. No strong feelings. All right. What about even the other ones? No, 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 no. no. All right. I don't know. Well, Martin intrigues me, but not too much that I want to see it, but okay. you never know. You never know. Inspector Gadget um, is it? It is then. So yeah, yes, yes. So we will see y'all. Um, same bad time, same bad channel. I always wanted to say that, and I don't know why it took me this long, but it did.